Nice duck that Craig. Gary, some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadent, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT Blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. That was some premature applause. You didn't hear it. <laughs> let's, do, let's do it again. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm going to be nice and loud because my brother-in-law is sleeping off a hangover right next door, and I hope I wake him up because he kept everybody up in the house till 6 in the morning. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, we'll come up there, man. Yeah. I mean, it is his house, but God dang, those Wagners are loud. Oh my God, <laughs> all my in-laws are loud and freaking alcoholics. And I hope you guys had a good time on your Thanksgiving as well, except for the foreigners here. Uh, yeah, I'm using that joke again. I don't care. Dirty, <laughs> Dirty foreigners. Uh, been, we all would have laughed if you wouldn't have used it before we went live. Yeah, yeah, just we're kind of used to it. Yeah, you should have said it. Laughed. But yeah, thanks for backing me up there. With, you know. hey, no. yeah, it is what it is. So. <laughs> ah. Wow, it's been a crazy couple of weeks around here and yes this is a, a title i am probably the most proud of for this episode disney committed mary suicide <laughs> and i have to thank uh cecil for inspiring it wow it the DM he sent me uh inspired that title so thanks cecil <laughs> shout out cecil shout out cecil um uh, you know i was noticing in the intro as is starting to look like that commando uh that he you know he's on the head of uh arnold He's starting mm -hmm. to look right. He's losing so much there. weight, right. dude. He's getting yeah. there. Yeah. That before and after yeah. was crazy. Looking yeah, great. Yeah. Really good, dude. Uh, but before we get to him, hi, Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. How the hell are you? It's good to be rehired by Friday Night Tights. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yes, well, I, uh, you know, to be fair, our contract, that huge, you know, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 500 page contract that yes. I made you sign. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we have those agreements. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. How, how dare two friends have a nerd argument? Wow, that's never happened in the history of humanity. No. Uh, but um, hello, everybody. Yes, uh, and Gary, congratulations on passing Dan Vask in subs. Uh, Dan is the one that oh, instigated me. this. Yes, he and did. 
I know he's got like a couple of banger like music videos he's ready to drop. You better hurry because Disney keeps giving Gary ammunition. <laughs> and uh, this thing's turned out to be a hell of a battle. It's turned out to be a hell of a it battle. Is. So yeah. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how it ends. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to try to get Dan to play a lot of video games with me for the next month. Just try to slow him down a little bit <laughs> and uh, <laughs> let Gary keep Me making too. videos. <laughs> 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 but uh, yes, Friday Night Tights, let's go. Let's go. Hey, uh, I thought he was going to put out Peaches and uh, I'm Knuff and just wipe me out. I was just- <laughs> yeah, he's had so many opportunities. Yeah. Like, I'm just uh, yeah. Ken should have been a Dan Vask cover song. It would have blown him past a million subs. D- Dan Vask is the is the Nintendo of YouTubers. So many opportunities to make tons of money and grow, and he just doesn't do shit with it while everyone's sitting there demanding it. Hey, Nintendo, give us all of this. No, nope, I don't think I will. That's what Dan's doing right now. <laughs> so, just let my old stuff keep making the money, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that is nice, okay? It's not bad. Uh, I have one video planned for the end of the year that – could counter a Christmas song, but he comes down with two. It might be a trouble. So like, <laughs> <laughs> we'll just say that. Um, and some of you know what it is. The video. Uh, but hey, I'm I'm glad you're. Uh, I was unable to fire you, Jeremy, and I'm glad you're here. I know. I'm I'm glad to glad to. You're never getting rid of me. Never Couldn't get out happen. of the contract. Yeah. Get out of the contract. We we yeah. have a ton to talk about. Actually, um, uh, most of the panel is not going to care, but culturally, it's relevant. Doctor Who's coming back, and this is the first franchise to really make a an effort to b- win fans back, and they <laughs> completely screwed it up <laughs> in, in their promotion <laughs> leading up to to the effort to get fans back in the most glorious way. And uh, the only guy I can talk about this is the guy who's leaving us for a month after this show. (laughs) (laughs) And he has a lovely sweater on. It is is a lovely sweater. My Christmas sweater. That's that's a really nice top you have on. Pokemon on your sweater? (laughs) The jumper. Uh, This is a jumper, not a top. It's very Uh, cute. You jump around in it? Like, why do they call it a jumper? (laughs) Yeah. What the hell you is it called at night because it's uh, so In the bright. spirit of Thanksgiving, I'm thankful that I'm not going to do this fucking show ever again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so Extending angry. His I'm thankful absence. that I don't have to fucking listen to these fucking He's retards an... <laughs> every fucking Friday. He's an angry foreigner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we love you, Make too. Make colonization great again. Oh. <laughs> See how he is. Uh, <laughs> uh, Doctor Who, great. I, I I love the way that uh, Russell T Davis managed to um to be on the plains of the Serengeti and still managed to fall off a cliff at the same time. <laughs> uh, I got that. Okay, yes. <laughs> unbelievable absolutely unbelievable uh just just uh even the bbc gave the new doctor who special a shit review i saw and it, it that's and it's cool. on their channel <laughs> whenever whenever gary and as talk about doctor who the whole panel turns into chrissy we're all just like looking for a one-liner Pregnant. to throw in there to act like we can add something to it <laughs> imagine Imagine if Chrissy redheaded and pregnant. Oh! <laughs> everyone Blowing. starts. Everyone starts fixing their cleavage. Or yeah. <laughs> it's 2023. We could be anybody. <laughs> hey, settle down, as settle down, settle down. All right. I'm saving my fab session for the Doctor Who discussion. Those tits right? Russell, Russell, every Russell day. T. Davies is right. Russell T. Davies the one who like said they misinterpreted the Daleks and it's all actually for like disabled people or something. Is that that dude? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. He said that you, well, you're not allowed to have disabled people being uh, evil. Villains. And yeah. I was like, hey, have you seen your president of the United States? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, and we'll, get, we'll get to it because there's there's massive hypocrisy where there's a clip that Uber Geek put up that we're going to play. And uh, it's culturally revel- relevant. And, and just imagine yeah, in the would- fucking UK. In, in imagine in, in Star now Wars. I'm British. <laughs> yeah, huh? is it, is that always insane. gonna be Ryan? I, I, I've I'm never British. been. Listen, I thought that joke was worn out a long time ago, buddy. I'm on your side. <laughs> <laughs> the British one is convenient. Yeah. <laughs> Some jokes. I, I figure. I figure you immigrated like mind. all those other fucking people who are stabbing kids. <laughs> 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 Technically, I did, but never mind. 
<laughs> uh, I, I didn't actually want to dox as, but his first name's Mohammed. <laughs> <laughs> Mohammed versus Babyface. Mohammed. Mohammed. Mohammed versus Baby. Is he gonna fucking? Is he gonna fucking marry it or kill it? Wow, I oh. glad Ryan made it past it's the 10-minute mark to get away. Yeah, we had Scott as well. <laughs> we had Scott as well today. Oh, wow. we for the 10 mark. That was OK Outpost intro. Hi, oh. Ryan. Uh, <laughs> I, don't got sh- I don't got shit to say about Doctor Who. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, we're mostly going to talk about Disney failing because, God dang, it's fun. OK. Uh, hi, I was going to say rape, not not marry, so I didn't censor <laughs> myself. All right. Yeah, do you do F Mary Kill? Ryan, that was one of your best ones, man. That was good. That was good. Hi, Chad. Hey, Gary. How's it going? So, you know, I'm actually like a very big Doctor Who fan. People don't really know this. I have a TARDIS in my front yard that I built. Okay. Um, But the fall of Doctor Who hurt me so bad. I can't come back to it unless I hear really good reports and everything that you guys are saying. It's not, no not helping. <laughs> it's not no. helping. So franchise is still dead to me and I'll appreciate, you know, all the classic stuff uh, and just ignore everything else. That's where I'm at with that. There you go. But it, but it shows you like the, even when they go back to try to fix this stuff, they're not going to be able to. They're just, they're not. Unless they actually have the balls and retcon all the dog crap they did and just restart from like Capaldi or something, then well, it's dead. I think every franchise su- should promote Dave Filoni and that'll fix everything. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like we're having the, the Star same. Wars is same. It does have like, and I don't know anything about Doctor Who, but it sounds like literally the copy and paste of every conversation we've had about Marvel and Lucasfilm. Like in order to fix it, they have to blow literally everything up they've done uh, mm-hmm. and start over. It, that's... Uh, well, not everything. It's the last child, or the was is that the title of that episode? Time with, ch- time 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 with children. Yeah. But no, at this point, we're at everything. Like every franchise we love needs to be twittered. Yes. It just needs to be yeah, twittered. It does. It needs to end. Mm-hmm. We need new stuff. Stop going yeah. back to the things we loved. We need to move forward. Hi, Chrissy. It's messed up. <gasps> Hi, Gary. It's great to be here. I couldn't help but wonder if the uh, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade was uh, was taken <laughs> over by Disney. I don't know if anybody else saw it, but they race swapped Mrs. Claus. <sighs> Did they? Oh my Which god! Which was fun in games till she drove the turkey float all the way to a Target. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> at, at this point, I think it has to take it as a win that there's not two like Mister Clauses, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Are we sure That's the it next was step. A, a she? Uh, uh, are we absolutely sure? Uh, yeah. Biologically nice speaking. Rack. Biologically That's speaking. All I know. I heard all the b- balloons were deflating. Yeah. 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 yeah there were Breaking news. Meritocracy, man. Made. We need it back. <laughs> yeah. Can't a lot of the floats balloons. started to deflate and look like testicles, and then they got to cut away. And somebody had a Palestine flag that they were waving on one of the floats, and then they also had uh, <laughs> Palestine people glued themselves to the parade route. So they had to they, stop oh my the God. whole fucking thing. Jeez. Sorry. I didn't realize they glued themselves. Hey. This might I did be the see though those uh, those pro Palestine people, um, the the trans for Palestine did uh, manage to put a banner up on the roof, and I thought, while you're there, <laughs> <laughs> it's what they Just do to, to them in foreign countries Just anyway. So that Middle East, time if you stay exactly. there. <laughs> yeah, that Middle East hospitality. What was that? Yeah. Be? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! What a start to this show. This is a hell of a good start. I gotta <laughs> say, man. This is a hell of a good now. Can I just leave right now? Happy yeah. Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Our holiday cheer ended last night. It's right back to business as usual. Hello, Odin. <laughs> hey, what's up? Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Glad to be here on time. It's a trend. I'm liking it. <laughs> Well, why is it the more successful Gary's channel gets, the more disrespectful the panel gets on this channel? <laughs> I don't 
think that's ever really changed. <laughs> no, it's gotten worse. This is this is a banger of an of an opening right here. There's some good stuff in this opening right it's here. It's like a top so, five, top yeah. ten opening. Yeah. Right? Culturally <laughs> relevant. Yeah, this, yeah, this is good. Top twenty five percent Irish. All right. <laughs> 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 uh hi quarter black hey what's up uh i taken a couple days off spent some time with the wife we had a 13th anniversary didn't watch any shitty movies i went out to the movie theater and watched thanksgiving that movie's actually really good i think you could, if you like horror movies if you like um not horror movies horror movies go watch thanksgiving it's actually really, really good eli roth brings it back it's pretty good so <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, biding my time until the next really shitty thing we got to watch. I'm thank God you didn't make us watch Wish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was gonna. Happen. I read the synopsis and oh my God. If it wasn't the holidays. It was, it was it. weird enough it's, watching it's, fucking it's, Little Mermaid. I don't want to. Yeah, watch it was. Mm -hmm. watch yeah. Thing. It's, you it's know what? Bad. See, I'm not all bad. I didn't make him watch <laughs> Wish. And next week, I'm going to make everybody watch Godzilla minus one. So you're going to think. That's going to be awesome. Oh, hell yeah. I'm actually excited for that one. Now. I don't I'm think gonna I'm going to have to read it during that. Awesome. Uh, you don't have to make you're anybody to watch read. that. Uh, that's going to be great. Are you enjoying, uh, enjoying uh, Quarter Black Friday? Yes. Uh, okay. I'm getting all the discounts, the five finger discounts, uh, <laughs> uh -huh. drinking all the 40s, you know, <laughs> as we do traditionally. Are you going to target? Just waiting for Kwanzaa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shit. Can, How'd you get can one? You in? describe to me what Kwanzaa is, Quarter Black. You're the closest thing to that on the the panel. So, what is I Kwanzaa? I did an entire Kwanzaa video. I went to Kwanzaa Fest. I went and asked the people of Kwanzaa Fest what it was, and they couldn't tell me what it was. I asked people from Africa, and they did not know what I was talking about. I think so, it's an American. Well, thing. It was an American. Yeah, it was made, made up in nineteen seventies, I think, right? By 60s. a man that tortured people. So yeah. yeah. So you want to explain holiday. this, Quarter Black? You want to explain this? He tortured people, but he loves oh. candles. Sure. You want to explain that one right there? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I will give everybody a wish because we all deserve that wishes. Is... Okay. <laughs> uh, that's pretty. That that's ear. pretty. That's pretty scary. Hey, do the uh, hit the other button where it shows the panel on the side, so it's not sharing full screen. There you go. There you go. Oh. That's uh, that's that, honestly, I would have went and saw this movie. I would have <laughs> yeah. saw this one. Ryan had the best name for this movie, though. Ryan, what's the name should have been for this movie? A uh, black girl and a goat. Yeah, there you go. That's what that's what they should have titled that's it. That's black girl and a goat. We talked about that on this channel on yeah. this live stream like fucking months ago yeah. when right. I said they've got that wish movie coming out and people are like, what is that? What is that all about? What, wish? And I said, I'm, they're like, I'm pretty sure. I watched a trailer and I think it's about a black girl and a goat. That's all I knew about the movie. <laughs> and I mean, that's all I still know at this the point. The goat's the best part of the film. Is the spoilers correct that the dad turns into the mirror? Yeah, so the, I guess the magic so. mirror. Spoilers, and she anybody? Turns into spoilers? The, yeah, don't, nobody don't, cares. Don't spoil this movie. We, we, there's fairy a lot of people still. Yeah, yeah, so they race really swapped the fairy godmother. The casting of that person race swaps that character, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Did anybody here see it? No. Oh, no, but I would see I'm not. Odin yeah. saw it. I watched it. Yes. Oh, right. there you Don't go. you have two sons? It. Yeah. <laughs> let's just let's just say that uh, pi you know that that uh, sailing the high seas was was involved. It's a privateer. You it's not pirates. They, it's privateer. You guys it's privateering. They privateering. called it Wish because it's like a Wish.com of a good version of a good movie. Yeah. You should have called it Make a Wish. Make a Wish. <laughs> make a wish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure all the people involved wish they were dead at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, it's called hey. cancer and it's terminal. But yeah. Alan Tudyk does oh, the voice of the goat. So that's the only good part. Hi, Comics Division. I'm like, Leaf on the Gary. How are you? I'm great. Nice of you to remember me this week. Appreciate it. It's very cold. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys get any snow yet? No, I, it snows when I leave. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Just drive safely. Timing right there, right? When I get in the car to drive away, it starts oh, snowing. Oh, yeah. Always, always yeah. good. Uh, always. Also, congratulations, Garrett, on not watching any crappy movies. Screw your family. No, I'm kidding, dude. Congratulations on your anniversary. I did it for uh, a little while. Thank, yeah. thank you. Had a great Thanksgiving. Hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And we have a special guest. We do. From side scrollers. Hey. Formerly from Screw Attack. His name is Stuttering Craig, but he doesn't stutter. What's up, Craig? <laughs> I just can't read. 
That's, that's my biggest downfall. <laughs> you're, you're amongst friends. You're yeah. amongst yeah. friends, <laughs> sir. You'll, you'll fit in here. You know that, though. You've been on main event enough. So Yeah, man. I'll tell you. Ryan's guys, the only one that can read around here. Everybody else yeah. is fucking retarded. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Speaking of retarded, uh, you know, Chris, you were talking about the Thanksgiving parade. Did you see the corn song at the Thanksgiving Imagine parade? They, did, they had the gall to not include the "It's Corn Kid." There like, were so many things wrong with this, and uh, I, I included a link in the private chat if anybody if anybody wants to watch it. But there's, it was sponsored by Green Giant, and at a point, uh, they there was a line that says, "This is on Thanksgiving Day." It's the same going in as it is coming out. That is a, that is a line in the actual song. Line? And then they take a corn cob and they stand ass to butt and they literally transfer no. the corn cob from their from their no. mouth underneath their bodies <laughs> yeah. to the to the other person's hands. It was Can fascinating. I got it. Wow. I got it. Oh, you got it. Oh wow. It's real? Yeah, this is real. This is a real it's thing. Real? <laughs> this is hard. Oh, oh my God. God. It's a family oh, program. My what does our society come hey, to? That, 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 that really makes you think about corn the long way. Right <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is what happens when we lack standards. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> Did uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda write that song? <laughs> is she the hero? Yes, yes. Yeah. Directed by Nancy Costa. <laughs> It seems like her diet has a lot of corn. <laughs> a lot of starches going on. The whole thing was sponsored by uh, by Green Giant, oddly enough. Wow. You know? oh. What's brown? Oh, oh, no. I can't believe that. What? Yeah, this is spectacular. Spectacular Jeez. stuff. So saw that yesterday, okay. and literally my entire family all looked at each other like, that just happened. And it, just, like it, it was amazing. It's a great reaction. That is awesome. Yeah. I freaking love it. <laughs> oh. oh. Welcome, yeah, Craig. Hey, I'm glad to be here. This is a, a true honor. I'm ex excited to be here with such wonderful, wonderful idiots like myself. And uh, I, <laughs> I, I admire all y'all in, in, in a known unique way, which is great. So Tonight, you won't be stuttering Craig. You'll be slurring Craig. Just <laughs> like every person in my family, including my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> You know what? There's a point as a sober person, I can hang with drunk people, but there's a, there's a, like a point of no return where I just kind of sneak into the office to close and lock the door and look at Twitter <laughs> for two hours. <laughs> I can't do when, it. When when Twitter is the normal, oh, uh, when Twitter turns to normal, you're in a bad situation. <laughs> so you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> uh, I did snitch. I ratted them all out. I don't care. Hey, up to six in the morning. Snitches get stitches, bitch. That's right. <laughs> Can you learn anything from prison, you fucking meth head? Uh, a couple things, as. God, you sound like Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> the comments of a stuttering Craig video. Yeah, no joke, man. I'll tell you what. Five years ago, he was in prison. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what do you want to start with, Garrett? Garrett's well, choice. Since Let's it's go. Uh, I think we should. It it, it only. We, we should give it its time. It's it's due. I think it's time to go to the meowvels. Oh, How are you supposed meow. to say meowvels? Meowvels. I have not seen this. Stop. I heard about oh, it. Someone yeah, sent me a super yeah, chat, but I've not seen fair. this. To be fair, it's better than the Marvels, okay? <laughs> and it's real. That's it's a real. low bar. That's because it's only 40 seconds long. <laughs> That's two <laughs> seconds longer than an ass wink. <laughs> Let's that go. Is a, mine's the quality. Um, I hear no no audio. No audio. Maybe that's boomer. A good we turn really it up. Uh, cue the boomer comments. Yeah. Cue the boomer comments. Yeah. 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 You should really now. look into getting a producer for this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. So nice. Actually, it's because I have it on the wrong browser. That, that doesn't make up for the fact that you <laughs> fucked it up. The wrong browser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hey, guys. The reason it's fucked up is because I fucked it up. Because I, I fucked found it up. <laughs> <laughs> It's a mute. I've never seen anything like it. Aww. We need you. 
And you. And you. It's not a black cat? Yeah. Oh my god. I didn't want to tight cut the kitty cats. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be I'll be honest, I'd rather watch this. This yeah. time. I, 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 enjoyable. I mean it's a legit question. Have videos. Would this earn more money if it was put in the box office? Probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> well, no, no, like, no, the, it, will, it will be more profitable. It will be more on profitable. YouTube, yes. On yeah. YouTube with the ads than it will. Mm -hmm. but, yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Be during, like the, pup, the puppy bowl. Yeah. I was just going to say during mm -hmm. the Super Bowl, I guarantee more women per capita watch that shit than the oh, Marvels. Yeah. Like yep. the puppy bowl. And then I think at halftime, it's like some cats or something, right? Like it's cats playing around. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They've added that there recent years. Yeah. For the women. <laughs> Me. Oh. Yeah, they went with Nick Furry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. They called him Nick Furry. That was the name I was using for him in my secret <laughs> <invitation. laughs> <laughs> I like yeah. how the cat's just like, get the thing off of my face. Where are all the black cats, though? <laughs> That'd be two on the nose. <laughs> Oh, oh man! They, 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 won't make, they won't make the black woman's carrot cat black due to stereo <laughs> racial typing. Oh, yeah, that, that's <laughs> but they'll much. fucking change every white hero imaginable. Yeah. <laughs> Cats is where they draw the line. Don't forget. I, I, that was that an official you yes, know, marketing yes. video that they made. Yes, that's called they, desperation. Yeah. That is so desperate. Holy crap! They got nothing that they're resorting to stuff like that. Please sing, oh. women. Watch our movie. We have cats in it. Well, that's, um, what, that's what they're saying. Yes, that's exactly what they're saying. It's amazing. Where is the Marvels currently sitting at the box office? <laughs> yeah, the holiday weekend. Yeah. It, uh, Outside the top want, five. Nationwide. It's, it's or, coming in or, below or Thanksgiving in the Thanksgiving numbers. Oh, Thanksgiving yeah. Day. It is 166. It's still only 70 million domestic. Yep. How, how much domestic? 70 million 70. It's, it, it's not going to break it's not going to break 100 million it, 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 it probably won't no. Th that, those international numbers won't probably don't update on that track or they won't update until we get like the official weekend numbers but yeah i mean probably by the by the end of next weekend we're probably looking at somewhere around 180 you know 185 Total, yeah. or something like by the end of sunday yeah 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 chance oh, of not getting to 200 million uh, over worldwide. that is insane that is oh, wow. crazy, insane. especially Aww. when the Flash made two sixty six worldwide. Mm -hmm. Well, Michael Keaton Batman was in it. I mean, mm -hmm. you had what do you have in this? You had freaking cats. Mionica Rambo. Yep. Woman the yeah. Accuser. They got type cats. Did <laughs> you just you, you just you don't you don't recover from this? Like th this is this is Batman. This is Batman and, and Robin. Th no, you it's not. Like, it, it, it's it's going to make less than Batman. No, no, no. And but, Robin. But, but I, I know I understand that. But what I'm saying is that that, it, that this this ends what they were they were doing. Uh, mm -hmm. th they can't recover from this financially. This is terrible. I mean, Batman was was. Batman 89 did really well. Batman Returns did okay. Uh, I think Forever, actually, I can't remember if Forever did better or worse than Returns, but then Batman and Robin just came out and just ended that entire run. And how long was how long was Batman not in theater? Was that 97 to 2005? Um, now, that's not going to happen here, obviously, but this is a... This is completely slam the door on any excuses that they have. This is oh, catastrophic. Yeah. Now you got record, Batman and Robin made two hundred and thirty eight million dollars worldwide, which uh, Ooh. Ooh. the Marvels Ooh. won't be able to won't and be able to sniff that. That's before you adjust yeah. for inflation. Yeah, yeah. What, what, yeah. yeah, adjusted for inflation. What is that, Ryan? Approximately five forty six. Yeah, yeah, right around there. Yeah. Sweet mm -hmm. fuck, ba Batman <laughs> Forever eight hundred. Uh, when you adjust for inflation, golly! Oh, wow. I, you know, I started I actually started watching that movie for the for the first time last night. Never seen it, and after watching the first two, the original Batman and Batman Returns, it's such a departure. It's so jarring. I I got about twenty minutes in and I I couldn't keep going. It's so different. I, you're talking about Batman and Robin, right? I watched right? the shit out of both of those. Though. Batman yeah. Forever, the third. Oh, one. so yeah. So I still, and again, I I still like Forever, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. j dr like. I like it for its cheesiness. I mm -hmm. genuinely like the two Tim Burton movies because I think they've held up, especially Batman 89 because of Gotham. I love mm -hmm. his Gotham and both of them, but um, but yeah, Forever is a drastic change uh, in, in a whimsical way. Um, 
Batman and Robin, it took a long time for me to enjoy that movie for the <laughs> so bad funny. aspects of because at the time I hated it and everybody hated it. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what the ha has happened now. It's like you have killed off any momentum you had, all that goodwill you've had. This is kind of solidified it right here with the Marvels. Now, moving forward, what do they do? They're going to get desperate. They're going to do stupid. They're, they're going to lean really heavily into the X Men stuff and the Fantastic Four, and they're going to screw all that up too. But um, yeah, this is a statement. Now, what will be interesting is will Aquaman do worse? And the opening tracking right now for Aquaman looks horrible well, as is well. It? What is it? Wow. 42, 30, 32, like, to 42. Yeah, yeah, 32 to 42 True. right now. Opening oh, weekend. Oh, and yeah. the budget be, on that thing is astronomical, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which would be higher than, you know, like Shazam 2 and Birds of Prey, but it's less than The Flash and would be less than the Marvel. The one caveat it's is as much as there. The Flash, but it, uh, dude, it had a lot of reshoots. Yeah, like well, one of the caveats with Aquaman, though, is that their projected long-term total of domestic is 105 to 168. So I think that that's kind of showing their... I don't know. It's gonna be interesting to see the battle. But again, like, yeah. uh, but, but the, it was Marvels, the Marvels. That's right. The Marvels had too. those numbers too before it came yeah. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the reality of it is, and again, Ooh, I do think worst. that I do think opening near near Christmas could again. We thought that it could do something for the, for some of these movies too. But, We're gonna see the same and, thing like Doctor Who, right? They're gonna try and be like, "Look, fans, we're trying to fix it. We're not gonna overtly tell you that we're we fucked it up. We're gonna try and fix it." But then they're not going to be able to fix it because they are just not able to tell good stories right now. No, they have hired they, they can't in deep executives and writers and actors and directors and all top to bottom horrible people that have no idea how to tell a good story. We're not going to see good stories for a while. No. no. If it's not, if, if we, we will, but it won't be coming from major studios and corporatism. It's just like, yep. mm -hmm. can't do it. They're, they're too... They're, they're too cowardly. They're too risk averse. And as we said earlier, every major studio needs to be Twittered. They're all yep. full of woke employees that run the company. Like uh, Bill Maher, who's a fucking idiot, uh, but occasionally he gets something right. Occasionally, at least he tries to be a classic liberal, was talking in his new rules uh, about, you know, corporations don't need to have an opinion on politics like ever no, they don't. Something we've been saying forever yeah. and he actually went after disney and didn't go after ron DeSantis like you think he would mm -hmm. he's all no disney tried to stay out of politics and it was their employees that kept them in it and nobody gives oh, a shit nobody gives wow. a crap what th their employees think right. and we don't as as regards to anything outside of disney and Disney's screwed as a corporation. They're they just going down. To, to invest in them right now, oh, well. you're, you just don't like your money. Just set it on fire. <laughs> set it on fire. If you're investing in that company, it's going nowhere. There's no way they can turn things around. They can try to pump as much money as they want into their parks. They're losing market share. And they're still an entertainment company. And they effed up two of the biggest franchises ever. Beyond repair. Books will be written. It will look back. It will not be looked back fondly on history. Mm -hmm. uh, we're right. We are winning. It's great. We lost a bunch, though, to get here. We had to lose pretty much everything. And yeah, but every time Mark Hamill tweets, I'm kind of thankful that the Star Wars got fucked up because I fucking hate Mark Hamill's guts, dude. And I, Gary crushed him again yesterday. Yes. Oh, that, that was Gary fucking crushed funny. him again hey, yesterday. Hey. Uh, he was basically something to do with his granddaughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Mark Hamill's basically like just another anti-Trump tweet on Thanksgiving Day because he can't stop thinking. I think Mark Hamill may love Trump more than me at this point. I, I think um, he does. Um, think but yeah, Gary just responded like, to, "Did you invite your granddaughter over?" Yeah, he, he basically said, "Happy Thanksgiving." This, for context, yeah, for context, this is the granddaughter that he wanted to have aborted. Uh, yeah. So. Yes. Uh, yeah. So. I yeah, it myself. <laughs> but I yeah, I truly. Yeah, <laughs> the only saving grace oh, for geez. Disney. Oh gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> Gary, how do you know that he wanted to abort her? Uh, it, it was major news. Yeah, uh, like, yeah the male cool. feminist, uh, female empowerment, Mark Hamill. His son went out and had sex with a porn star. And uh, she wanted to keep the baby and the uh, the women, the female. This is from her. This is from the female. This is from the, her. Yeah. This is from yeah. Her. yeah. 
and he was pushing for her to get an abortion. A man was pushing oh. for a woman that wow. he didn't have sex with to have an abortion to save his reputation and his son's reputation. Classic dad move, right? There. And and they they told her that the fi family would not financially support her or the child if she chose to have it. Yep. Whoa. Yeah. 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 Good female guy, Mark Hamill. Everybody, he's all about the female empowerment. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Mark Hamill is an objective. He's a family man. He's a terrible, <laughs> terrible human being. I hate his. As guts. long as the family's dead. Think about that poor girl. She's gonna grow up knowing that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. Mark Hamill's my yeah, great. At least she's gonna grow up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Very good point. Very yeah. good point. So good for mom. Uh, for for keep it for whatever reason, I don't care. I really don't care. She's here. Probably, probably but, for money. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. But um, uh, gotta be real. But she's yeah. here, and maybe she benefits society, and that would be great. Uh, Speaking of an abortion, maybe she'll cure. Well, if it was a boy, I'd say maybe she, maybe will cure cancer. Okay, no, somebody did not just say force ghost granddaughter in the chat. Oh, oh. oh. somebody oh. needs to make that meme and go, oh. Mark, is this what you were thankful for? <laughs> oh, Got camera off on Gary. That's how good that was. Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole. Damn. Damn. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity on Friday night. Friday night, I say hello, Twitter. Hi, Twitter. Yes, Twitter. Hi. Twitter. We've been Hi, clipped. Twitter. Hi. Hi. Hi, Twitter. We don't care. Hey, Reddit. My Hi, Twitter. Friend. Reddit. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, there's what? people that we, we shouldn't worry. Doing bad things, oh, we can't. We can't leave out Reddit we either. They we shouldn't worry about, that, we worry about that fucking clip. Mark Hamill should. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> We're retarded. All right. <laughs> And no time for them. Wow, actually, the mom, Megan Chen, actually, in this article I'm reading, she previously did have an abortion, and the experience left her feeling uh, like unaliving herself. Wow. So, so Eric really so he really force it on her after. after He's that. also racist well. as well. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right. It's Asian. Yeah. There you go. Stop the Asian yeah. hate, Mark. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 When you guys, you guys are all pretty big Star Wars fans, yeah? Not at all. Well, <laughs> no, no, no. I am a big Star. War I'm a big actual Star Wars fan. Not OG whatever Trojan. this shit is. Right, yeah. right, right. So, so when you guys go back and you watch four, five, and six, and you're like, "Oh man, Luke Skywalker," are you like, "Man, Luke Skywalker," but it's Mark Hamill? Like now that you know, can you can you guys separate? I, I can still artist? separate it because separate. he looks yeah. so different. In, well, see, ways, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I hate Mark Hamill at my core. I think he is a horrible person, and I can't wait to meet him one day so I can tell him I voted for Trump three times <laughs> uh, to his fucking face. But um, I when I watch Star Wars, I don't like anything now with Mark Hamill would probably be tainted. But like that came at a time in my life where that had a big impact on me, and so his the way he's been acting the last several years has no impact on what those movies and that role meant to me when I was younger. Um, so it has had not effect, just like Disney's movies really, they haven't had, they, they were times where Disney's movies started to have an effect on the original mm -hmm. trilogy and, and the prequels. But I, I kind of got past that because I've just separated everything Disney's done. I no can't do done. that. dude. I tried watching empire like four years ago. And all I heard was Gary say, all roads lead to Jay Skywalker, and I immediately stopped the movie and I couldn't watch it anymore. I've yeah, said it in my in my my exactly. mind. They, in they my heart. It's not the same. They're not mm -hmm. the yeah. they're it's not the, the same yeah, timeline. It's yeah. Disney also, Star Wars. That's it. Yeah. I really think like classic Luke Skywalker character represents some really good positive things. That's actually oh, quite yes. the antithesis yeah. of what Mark Hamill stands for. I mean, Luke. Yeah. Literally tried to redeem Darth Vader, like the most evil, genocidal, crazy <clears throat> guy in the. Mark Hamill is here, like you know, f Trump and you know, like how much we're given a sea show. And so the character actually stands in contrast to kind of condemn the way Mark Hamill currently behaves. Well, also the storytelling, right? Because the storytelling, like I, I look at that film and I see Luke Skywalker, I see Han Solo. I don't see the actors when when I mm -hmm. look at the original trilogy. Yeah. And yeah. like you look at most films today. And all you can see are the actors because they've become so vocal. So you you have no ability to have that separation. I feel in today's world with modern films. Well, and then I, let's be real. Oh, go ahead, Chrissy. Go ahead. I can separate. To me, it's like looking at baby photos of Ted Bundy. It's like, oh, this is before. 
things got bad. Yeah. That's, that's, an, that's an extreme example there, Christy. Even when he was baby Hitler. So even when Ted Bunny was killing people, weren't they? Didn't he have like a lot of people who thought he was really hot and shit? He was very attractive. <laughs> yeah, there you go. No, no, Ryan, he had women writing. No, when he was in tribal. He had a bunch of simp women riding him. A yep. bunch of serial killers doing death row inmates do. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a, a thing. Hey, yeah. hey, if you, you know, ever want to get a little more attention from women, just saying. But, <laughs> better than that. Better than the red pill. Advice. Hey Ryan, let's talk about Star Wars, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you know who everybody simps for? Anakin fucking Skywalker, <laughs> who fucking murdered a bunch of kids <laughs> and choked his wife. <laughs> Yeah, but, but like, women, like ability, women have, the, um, women have this ability to fucking simp after the most retarded fucking people possible. So <laughs> I mean, the, we uh, learn a little from that. Uh, what was the last joke? Uh, sorry, what was the last job that Ted Bundy had? He wrote a I heard. It, I heard he was a conductor. Ah, I get it. I was wondering where he was going with that one. I get it. I'm fucking out of here. Go fuck off. Because he liked trains. He was autistic. <laughs> As intensely telling bad jokes so he can leave early. <laughs> Uh, if you leave now, you have to come back in December. As <laughs> part of the contract, we talked about it in the contract. secret Discord. Yeah. Now I'm <laughs> looking up. Did Ted Bundy get the electric chair? Uh, I didn't know. But the other the, the other thing I, about Mark Hamill was he is gassed? I think he's, <laughs> he's back. The other good thing about Mark Hamill is that he's literally not done anything else relevant as an actor outside of his obviously with Joker, but that was you know voices voiceover, but. Name another prominent role that a cock knocker in the Kevin Smith movie. He was in the machine. He was in the machine. Yeah, he was the dead. He was, he gets, he gets, he was dead. in Kingsman. He was in Kingsman. His head blows up in Kingsman. <laughs> that's right. And so yeah. that, that's it, though. He's like, he's not a Mark Hamill is not a movie star, just like Chris Evans is not a movie star. He's he's iconic for a specific mm -hmm. role. When he's in a particular role, he's important. But when he's not in that role, nobody gives a shit about him as a person or as an actor. And, and so. Like Corey Feldman, like a little bit like a lol cow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So like Chris Evans is another one. I I, I think he's awesome as Captain America. Um, you know, outside of that, who cares about Chris Evans? He's irrelevant. Yeah, nobody so. cares. Right. Uh, what um, Shad was talking about, you know, we've talked about it before. Why Mar uh, Luke Skywalker was the hero of generations because of what happened in Return of the Jedi, and it was different back then. Our heroes stopped fighting. Mm -hmm. Threw away his weapon, just said, Nope, not mm -hmm. doing this, not going down this road. You're probably going to kill me right now. That's it. Uh, that was a huge moment. That was a cool moment. So I put it in my last video. It's one of my favorite moments of Star Wars when he tosses the lightsaber, not when he tosses it over his fucking shoulder yeah. and misinterpreted by that piece of shit, Jar Jar Abrams. Uh, a Jedi, you know, like my father was, before yes, me. for his dad, yes. for, for his irredeemable dad. I mean, yeah. that, that is a great moment, and uh, we'll always remember that. Uh, fuck Disney Star Wars. It's, and he threw his lightsaber away because he knew he knew that was the last thing he needed to do to bring Anakin back. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it, was, it was brilliant. Storytelling, uh, timing, character yeah. moments, none of that happened <laughs> in <laughs> Disney Star Wars. The best thing that Disney has done is the fact that they have only one film coming out, or the next film they have coming out is not until June of next year. I know, that's right. And they moved it, right? They moved it down. Home. Inside Wait, Out, what? June 14th of 2021. Oh, Inside Out, okay. Okay, yeah. so, and, and then their next Marvel film, which, like, Deadpool. by all accounts, if they fuck this up, man, that, then it's, it, I mean, it's over anyway, because this is a gimmick, and if you have to rely yeah. on the Fox X-Men to get people back, but they have not finished principal photography for Deadpool. They just started back up. They again. just started. You guys yeah. need to wait and let Filoni get involved because he has the same power over Marvel and Pixar as he does over Star Wars at this point. None. Considering he so. can't tell anybody <laughs> what to do, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's none. Oh, and, and another thing, real quick the Film Actors Guild strike is not over. No. It's not what? over. They, they, they've had a ceasefire. They've had they a tentative agreement. They haven't signed <laughs> it, though. They have not signed or ratified the agreement, and people are starting. To, I know. I, I still think they'll sign it, but uh, there's there's people who are, are trying not to sign it and refusing Matthew to sign Mandine's it. Dean's not going to sign it. He's going to sign I'm, it. I'm all for it, guys. I say strike for <laughs> another six months. They keep Just striking. keep going. <laughs> Every day that you don't sign is another day I don't have to watch shit. Mm -hmm. So please. 
Yeah, there, there's plenty. You know what? There's plenty of old good stuff to watch. Been enjoying that. Uh, mm-hmm. not, I can just watch Grand Tour and Clarkson Farm all day long. Don't care. Hey, uh, my, my question for you guys is: it, Once the Ray movie fails, once the Ahsoka movie fails, what about the think- Acolyte? That's going to turn Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah once man. those fail, do you think Filoni gets fired? No. Since since no. they since they put no. him in this position to promoted. be the person. But again, though, once those fail, they that's the whole point is that I think I think he's being just put out there all guy to, mm-hmm. to yes, I think he's being uh Bob Chapek. I, 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 I actually, question I, if those I, movies I, I, listen, even come out at this point. I actually I, don't think this is as much of this like 40 move that a lot of people have been talking about no. in, in the same way that when Dave Filoni was promoted to executive creative director of the entire fucking studio, which by the way. He had the exact same responsibilities for the last three years that he has now. Um, they didn't tell anybody about it for like six months. They just updated the website. You know what I mean? It wasn't some big press release that Dave Filoni, it was the lead creative director for the entire studio. They just happened to update the website six months after the fact. And they're like, yeah, by the way, Dave's got this thing. He's had it for a while. This one, it's also was not some big press release. It was literally Dave Filoni told everybody yeah, you know, recently I got, you know, I, I got this new role. I'm chief creative officer. It was Dave Filoni telling people that he had recently gotten this promotion. But, you know what I mean? And it's yeah. the first time because because he couldn't talk during the writer strikes and yep. then the actor strike happened. It's mm-hmm. the first time in like seven or eight months that he's actually sat down and done interviews on this thing. But it so, was formatted. And you're right, Ryan. You're absolutely right. But that the way it was formatted in that Vanity Fair article, by the way, the same Vanity Fair that came out and called Lord of the Rings fans racist before Rings of Power even came out was the mouthpiece of Amazon. It was formatted like a press release. And I think that was purely PR. Sure, it's the first time he could talk, but like Disney needed something good, like needed something to make people excited because they have they have had a I don't know if anybody's noticed they've had a pretty bad month, a pretty bad. Uh, yeah. uh, I know they're oh, stocks well. right now. I, I don't think tiny violins out. Mm-hmm. No, I no, I, I I don't think it's good news at all. I I, I think it's it's horrible news. And uh, you know, you you mentioned that there's a pocket of people who love Dave Filoni and are excited about this. Um, but I I think that's a shrinking pool. And uh, even some of the Filoni fans are like. Huh. I mean, three yeah. years ago, I would have been excited about yeah. this. Uh, yeah, now I have zero. Ago, yeah, Z- I have zero. Phil, to me, is there any? <laughs> three years uh, ago, and, I would have been upset okay. because so many yeah. people were happy with it. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I will say this. So in, in, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my words carefully here, but like because uh, Filoni, I wouldn't classify him as a it's man, uh, but man. he's just, he's closer. He's like, he's closer to a male than the majority of executives at Lucasfilm. Is there any other? Men at Lucasfilm in prominent positions right now. There Pablo are Hidalgo. a couple uh, that we know Pablo. of. Pablo Hidalgo is not in a prominent. Position. No, he's not a prominent. Like, you, not you got prominent. guys like Doug man. Chang. You got guys like Doug Chang that are still there. Uh, you got the guys like Lita ILM. Like you do have some people, but no, you're 100 percent right. Most of the like executive vice president in charge of marketing, the executive vice president, like almost all those exclusively are women. They yeah. are women. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> saying. After Ray f- fails and after Ahsoka and and whatever, uh, just look for look for a fall guy, and it won't be Kathleen Kennedy. Hey, you might okay, you might be right. I, I don't think they would fire Filoni, but if you're looking back at the MCU, uh, its sister uh, its subsidiary at Disney, they there was a lot of people who were gotten rid of and left in the last couple of years. Alan Horn bailed in 2020, you know, Victoria Alonso gone, Ike Perlmutter gone. There's a lot of people who were quote unquote, Ike Perlmutter was technically above Kevin Feige, but in the eyes of Disney, he was below him. Believe me. Mm -hmm. A lot of those people are gone and you're running out of fall guys for the MCU. And I don't know who you, who the fuck you replace them because you can't deny what Kevin Feige took part in, in the beginning. Uh, Ryan, I got the same thing. But if you fucking fire him, like, what do you do? So, but like, you could, you should have fucking fired Kathleen Kennedy and everybody. Won't like, happen. Won't uh, happen. Oh, no, of course not. Yeah. But you should have. And right now, it's like, wow. it doesn't even matter. And, and like, a, a couple, couple years from, here. like, a couple years from now, <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy probably will be ready to leave at some point, right? But mm-hmm. Dave Filoni ain't going to be president. I don't, I mean, I don't think. 
They're going to no, have somebody else as president. Hold Brian, on, stop. Go, Brian, out, go, back, go up to that black girl. Ryan, when, when Kathleen Kennedy's 80 and she leaves Please. because she's fucking 80, how many people are going to go, I was right. <laughs> oh, it's so many. I can't wait for that to happen. That's like yeah. when, Tom, I, like when Tom Brady retired. <laughs> I remember this lady from Black Panther, actually. Yeah, Queen Dechukwu. Wait, who's uh, that? So, Director of Diversity and Inclusion. But right next to her is my favorite, Megan Crumpacker. <laughs> oh, and Chris oh. Coxall. Wow. Oh, I even real names. Coxall over your face. When, when your last Joseph name Chu is Crum Coxall. When your last name is Crumpacker, you cannot be overweight. <laughs> no, you, and she's like the most attractive woman that yeah, works there, too. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. And shout absolutely. out to, to Crumpacker. With yeah. that fake smile. Like, she can't even manage a fake smile. It's, uh... I think she's got like that palsy thing. Maybe. No, she's just uh... angry activist. Oh, she's Jim Ross? She's yeah. Activist. This is the top brass. Wait, all, all the way up. So yeah, you've got you've got Kathleen Kennedy. You've got right, you see a man. Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting to see a man scroll. Wait, wait, still, still waiting. Still, still waiting. Still waiting. Still waiting. <laughs> right. then, wait, wait, wait. wait. That, guy, that, guy, that guy, Momita, that dude. That looks good. Dude. <laughs> Dude, right there. Why honestly, CGI <laughs> the next time, face, by the way, the next time you want to put like a, a buff dude's uh, body on a chick, has used use Momita's body. Holy shit! No, yeah, like right. <laughs> Momita <laughs> <both> neck. problems. <laughs> What's your set? What's your set? What are you doing? What are you pushing? What are you benching, like a transitioning woman, a little bit. So I, I kind of look at this from a, from on the outside. I'm from the outside looking into this, right? I don't watch Star Wars movies, right? I don't really care about Ahsoka. I don't really care about any of this. So, so whenever I, I hear y'all talk about these things, I, I always look at it from my perspective as the guy who really doesn't care about this. And for me, the, the way for me to get back caring about this is for it to go away and go away for a long time. Yep. And the idea of absence yes. making the heart grow fonder, the idea <laughs> of, and they'll never do it. They'll never just say, well, we're, we're going to take a five-year break from Star Wars or a decade break or then come back but there, it's all it's oversaturation for me, and I, I'm of the mindset that I don't want to have to play catch up on all these series, and I don't I don't know you know where Ahsoka lies in the whole Star Wars universe. I don't I don't care. Uh, there's just so many spinoffs from the main series that the best thing for it to do to, to draw me back in is just to restart it all and have a big time lapse in between. Am, mm -hmm. am I wrong yeah. in that? Or? No, you're not no, wrong. As a matter of fact, I hate to, to right. steer people towards IGN. There's a Twitter post they put up with uh, with Nolan in the last 24 hours. You probably have to it'd take you a day to skim through it. But he's talking about Oppenheimer and physical media mm -hmm. and the future of Hollywood. And he absolutely talks about legacy. Like he gives a shit about legacy. And he's talking about oversaturation and content versus art. And he basically says, uh, if we don't do something right now, it's gone. It's yep. done. Because well, it's, it's done for the West, not elsewhere. No, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. <clears throat> Well, no, Nolan, like, Nolan actually, like, dude, if you look at all the success he's had, like, any other director would have made a sequel to Inception after it made, like, seven or $800 million yeah. back then. A any other director would have made a, a sequel to... Uh, they would have probably stayed on The Dark Knight, and he moved on from it, you know. Um, it would have made it uh, more interstellar. It would have done so much more. He just, once he makes a movie, he's done with it. He moves on to the next. And he, him and Tarantino are a very rare breed that that's about all that's left of their breed in Hollywood. Well, they're actually right filmmakers. So. That's that's the yep. rare yeah. breed these uh, days. Uh, yep. Interstellar is a love letter to his daughter. Yep. That's what Interstellar is. You know, yep. it's, it's a very personal film. Also, Mahler's before. favorite movie. Mahler loves that movie. Mahler <laughs> loves that movie. <laughs> so, you know, I, it's my favorite movie I was ever. Bored off my tits. Love it. It's all right. <laughs> me too. It's it it's gets a solid. All right for me. This is fantastic. pointed out in, in the chat. The collector's corner says there's 42 executives in Lucasfilm. 42 <laughs> people all chiming in with their own ideas on how things are yeah. how how to get it right. It's almost as many people that was going to be on the Gina Carano cope call that they wanted to have. I mean, it wasn't 45. Yeah, budgets are a waste like, of money. To, I mean, to be gosh. fair, a, like a lot of these people are randomly in charge of like things that don't fucking matter. Yeah, right? Right. Have no creative input. You know? Like Disney. <laughs> no, but you know, it's it's what Nolan has talked about. We have been trying to to push with the these you know franchises that we love that are now dead. 
is like we as fans care about the legacy. We'd love to re we would love to have good new Star Wars stories for yeah. years. Or or if you want to adapt properly the second age uh in in lord of the rings hell yeah okay i'm all i'm all for it i'd love to see it but or i would love 50 more years of doctor who but when they're usurped by activists and completely destroyed and we're out there going you know what don't do this we want to keep giving you money that's what we've been doing for the last five years so you can't blame fans as much as they would love to for being pissed we tried we, we tried and now we're like okay fuck you Okay, we're gonna laugh. We're gonna we're gonna roast. We're gonna roast fucking marshmallows over your bonfire. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> your, like, uh, Hollywood burning. Yeah, and, and and the the death of physical media is super depressing. It's super uh, depressing. It's super depressing mm -hmm. from a video game standpoint, uh, from a movie standpoint, from comics. Uh, it, like it's really, I hate it. I I I hate that we've reached this point. And what is it? Didn't Best Buy make an announcement like a few months ago that they're moving yeah, away from all Blu-rays really and everything yeah, and like no that? No one talks about Basing that. It out. Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. And the other thing that's bad about it is the censorship aspect. When something else becomes problematic, they have the ability to go and edit out their content at that that's point. Exactly well, that, that's that's why they're getting yeah. rid of physical media. It's, yeah. it's not for any other reason than they can control what right. that film think, does and well, control that's why it. Need think about Roll Doll. And like, that's why I'm sharing my screen right now on that point. because We need support companies like like Arrow and yeah. Screen Factory, who are like artisanal yeah. companies who are going out and making 4K stuff yeah. that, are, that are pretty fun and pretty cool. Yeah. So I like this. Christopher Nolan says they've been working hard on the home version of Oppenheimer that fans can own and that no evil streaming service can come <laughs> and steal <laughs> from you. Yeah. 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 Is that a All quote? Right, Did he say that? that yeah, that, he said that. I, yeah. yeah. Wow. So that yeah, uh, no, one's, no one's actually been an advocate for physical media for a long time. This isn't long something new time. No, and, no. Uh, and and like when I, I mean I saw Oppenheimer at the cinema, I I didn't think I was gonna like it that much. Thought it'd be okay. I thought it was unbelievable. Uh, so so to see that, I will I will pick up that 4K in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. In a heartbeat. Yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. did in that IGN interview. He talked about um, uh, the Dark Knight and the usage of IMAX and and how he convinced Warner Brothers to allow him to use IMAX. He's all because it transfers so much better to Blu-ray. It you know it, it just it's easier to transfer. It costs yeah. you less money because we're putting the money up front and uh the resolution and everything about it is is much better uh so like all his movies will always be on blu-ray and 4k i mean there's it's not going to go away forever again there's going to be these smaller companies there that are, that are uh, uh, the weird thing is i don't think it's going to happen with big movies but we're going to have a lot of older movies good the transfers vary in, in well, well, it's, quality, it's interesting yeah it was there. To, to that point, like, and I know we've, it, I'm not regurgitating our, our wonderful binge weekly um, argument, but what I'll say is, like, several years ago, with Netflix doing what they did, I don't think it seemed, it didn't seem like that the weekly model was ever coming back, but you saw it to start slowly creeping back. You know what I mean? And right now, it looks like physical media can never come back. I would just say give it time because it always comes full circle. So vinyl. five, six, There's seven years ago, now. yeah, five, ah. six, seven years ago, it looked. I swear, I was like, we're never going to see weekly shows again, and now we are. Now depends. I don't know if that's fully swung back. I, I don't think it has, but we definitely seen gains from the weekly side, and it's kind of a fifty-fifty trade-off right now. I feel like in a lot of ways, depending on the platform, or if Disney's just really embarrassed about their next product and they want to binge it out so nobody I talks about it. But um, but so with the physical side, like it does look like it's over. But I would say have some hope because it, it typically comes full circle. I feel I like it's a lot in our they culture losing money on that or not because yeah. I mean, yeah. that's a huge source of revenue that they're basically cutting off at this point, which is yeah. really dumb. I think in our, in our culture, there's a lot of different right. avenues that that they're taking away our ability to to tangibly have effects on the things that we own, right? Mm -hmm. So they're trying to take your phone, our ability, your computer, to, they're, your they're trying movies. to take away the ability to to watch something in the manner that we want to watch it in, exactly. and the manner that it was yeah. created in. That's they're what changing they want to all alter. of it. So I, I I wonder I wonder if if enough of it you know you you think that the Gen Z crowd are going to be completely detached but I think there's a possibility that it could be the opposite they could yearn for that attachment to something because right now almost everything that they interact with is not real it's well, they have, yeah, they have well, no control I, over any of it 
I talked about this on, on Cobra Cast a few days ago, but The Apprentice with Donald Trump cannot find it anywhere. You cannot find Boss it. This media. was the number one show. This was a, this was show was made, watched by 10, 20 million people every week. And you can't find The Apprentice anywhere. It went for 15 seasons. Mm -hmm. It was a massive success. You yeah. can't find it anywhere. I've looked. I can't buy it. I can't stream it. I can't even find, like, you can find, like, season one out of the 15 seasons on DVD on eBay. Literally, they've, they've, they've made it to where it never existed because they don't want people to see that particular, you know, person mm -hmm. in, in a certain light. You can't find it any fucking where. It's insane to me that that show mm -hmm. is, is just... It's it's been erased from existence for the most. I want to ask a stupid yeah. question. What is so good about Blu-ray versus a regular DVD? It, you get very nerdy data. with it. The quality you can put more is, data onto the disc. Yeah. The quality is way higher. The resolution, resolution. on all of the pixel mm -hmm. depth. And, yeah. Even more important than anything else, um, though, is that you actually own it because this really is a that, debate yeah, yeah. over ownership itself. Because <laughs> if you have it on digital, it's now at the point where you can buy something on digital and then one year they could lose a contract and you don't get access. Oh, to that you're going to say Amazon already doing that. Amazon already doing that. Yeah. Amazon Amazon already already does. Doing yeah. that. That's our. It's going to get so much worse over the next couple of years when you start seeing streaming services fall because they will mm -hmm. start falling in the next couple of years. And anything. Well, hey, remember iTunes? You kids have any kids have iTunes? My iTunes are gone. Mm -hmm. I had yeah, fucking ten thousand songs on iTunes. They're fucking gone. You know uh, th that shit. It 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 ages out. Uh, I I fired up a, a TV. I have a 3D TV. I put in my game room, and it has a but. It was a smart TV back in 2013. None of the apps work anymore. Yes. Netflix mm -hmm. apps doesn't. The Netflix uh, the, it was called Hulu Plus. You can't update them. They're dead. They're gone. So anything I bought on that TV gone. So uh, I mean, yes, you can go burn your own stuff. Maybe that's what I do. But uh, it, but like, yeah, it, it's it's going to be. It's you're just renting it. It's just a long term rental. Uh, no one gets into that, in that interview. Yeah. You know, I remember what get, they used to say get, when the internet was a, was starting up. It was the internet is forever. Anything you put on the internet is going to mm -hmm. be there forever. Try going to one of the websites you used to go to 20 years ago. MySpace, gone. All the stuff on there, gone, right? All my pictures are gone from MySpace. All yep. my pictures are, are gone. It doesn't even exist. You can't even go, hey, hey, son, let me show the past when, when I was a kid, what, what we did. It's gone. And that's just one platform. And that the dead internet theory is something that uh, is really intriguing to me is the we interact with the internet at a very surface curated level mm -hmm. through Google and through all these different mega corporations that just give you the very top of the top. If you go to Google, you, you search something, you go not even 10 pages in, it starts Ten? repeating. It starts That's repeating the same. I don't yeah. know, two pages deep. Yeah. It starts repeating <laughs> the same articles over and over because yeah. you, you just can't get to, and even if you get to some of those other articles, the links inside of them will be dead. Because they're oh, yeah. not all connected, oh, so got, there's so much of this that channel, we've lost. I try was trying to find some old headlines from like stuff I absolutely covered five years ago. Mm -hmm. Couldn't find it. Gone, I had to go right? back to my video to screen cap the headline because they're gone. Mm -hmm. so Internet archaeology is a thing. Media, though, I wouldn't get too bummed right now about the avenue that they're trying to take with media. In actual fact, I would encourage corporations to do exactly what they're doing because in doing what they're doing, they are going to rise up the. Uh, production of films, which a lot of people haven't seen, onto Blu-ray copies, into physical media, which will then get sold on and people get new eyes on this. At the moment, we've got in the top five at the cinema right now, we've got Napoleon and Thanksgiving. Napoleon, going back to a bio piece, I could talk about Napoleon if you want. Sorry, yes. I do want to know if uh, that's good. Uh, as, yeah, because and, uh, and Thanksgiving, which is uh, a, a a low budget Eli Roth horror slasher, just just traditional slasher, tr slasher who done it. Both of them Grindhouse beating trailer. the Marvels, which has only been out for two full weeks. Mm -hmm. So so let corporations try and dictate what you can see. Ultimately, they're going to crush themselves. Mm -hmm. They're going to crush yep. themselves. Oh, they're they going to they're going to destroy what what people can actually see, how they can actually view it. And it, people are going to lose interest with the comic book industry. The comic book industry is never going to, to work unless you have physical copy. Yep. Because that's the whole point of a, it's a process. It's not just a book. You're getting, you're getting corporations that are looking at things so sterile. It's a book. We can transfer book to digital, save money, bingo, jingo. No, 
it's a process. The fan goes to the shop, they buy the comic, they hold the Experience. comic, they open the comic, they sniff the comic, they flick through the pages of the comic, they finish the comic, they bag it, they board it, they catalog it. It's a process. It's a whole well, thing, something you can never take away from people. You stick something on digital, they'll go elsewhere. No, I it, mean, it, you're right, as it, it devalues it. It makes it disposable. Digital makes it disposable. It's done that to publishing. It's done that to music. It's now dudge, uh, done it to, to uh, film and TV. It's going to do it to games. I think games will be the only ones that you can fully accept, ex accept on digital. Uh, but especially, like, do comics... The American comic book industry it, within our lifetime will be done. They will just be yeah. uh, reprinting shit and occasionally making new stuff. But it got wiped out by manga in the last three years. Just in the last three years alone, it got completely destroyed. And you lost. That's your second generation and, lost, by the and way. Gary, what does manga do in Japan? Why, why do so many copies sell in Japan? There is a culture of reading manga in Japan, not just a culture of purchasing and reading it, but you purchase it, read it, and then you leave it. So well, that, that was the original culture with, uh, with comics, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd, leave, you'd read it on the train, you'd read, read it on the bus, whatever, and then you'd just leave it on your seat. And then somebody would come and pick that up and then read it, and then that would be like, holy, oh, I enjoyed this or whatever. And then they go out and they start buying that manga now. Like an umbrella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, they'd yeah. start sticking Actually, them in the so eyes. Place. Yeah. Because yeah, they're originally comics were the same way that they were Actually, viewed as basically comics. disposable and people would read them and throw away or give it to somebody Ask else. To go this. Name. Ask yourself this. I will say one more time. Tell me classic comic stories from the last five years. Tell me a classic all time fucking movie from the last five years. Tell me a classic all time fucking television show from the last five years. Back 20 years ago, you could name five easily. You could just go boom, 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 boom. Now you're like, mm, maybe this, maybe House of the Dragon. Yeah, House of the Dragon would be definitely yeah. on the list, but... Uh, I don't think so. It's, too, it's, too, 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 it's too small to market. Rose. It's too small to market. Rose. Um, <laughs> Joker. Um, you know, I, I, it's it's, it's Joker on there. It's, it's very hard. Content. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's very hard to say. And Joker, I loved it. Is kind of a remade taxi driver. That's true, yeah. 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 That's all it is. You know, it's not, it's not even a Joker movie. It's not a Joker movie. It's a script that was repurposed I, to be. Yes. To start and a I joke. love love that movie. Um, it's an all time classic performance. But like, we used to get multiple yeah. ones a year. Now we're getting like one every couple three years. It's it and but we have more stuff than we've ever had. More stuff. Yeah. So it's becoming disposable. It's connected to the physical media uh, comment, too, because I usually base it off of how many films do I actually want to go out and buy on physical media? And, mm -hmm. and I look at like all the years that I have. It's like this is one of those years that there's very few things that I actually care to own on physical media. And so I think that's also a good way of metric. And it's another, another good metric. It's interesting how they're getting rid of this. They're trying to get rid of it in some respect. But, you know, I have this copy here of Oppenheimer. And guess what? Can never take this away. And I'll always have no. it. Can't uh, edit it, can't change that. it, can't mm -hmm. do anything to I'd it. Love it's in to your buy hands. One piece, mm -hmm. but it's not out. I'd buy one piece on 4K. Fuck yeah. You know, I saw I saw no. this yesterday, actually, this exact thing we're talking about. Uh where we were watching The Wizard of Oz was on TV. I think it was on TNT, TBS, whatever it was. And uh, there's the famous scene of the of the munchkin uh hanging themselves as they go off into the have you guys all heard this theory, this conspiracy theory? Oh you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were watching that scene and I was talking to my brother about it and we're waiting for this to happen because we're explaining this to our kids. There's a scene that happened blah, 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 in the background. It wasn't in it anymore. Nope. They removed it. And I was like, wow, you know, it's amazing how they, they just decided to digitally remove the, the just a bird. I think in the remake that much can actually goes on to be trans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bizarre because I was in Saudi Arabia the other month. <laughs> And, and Rise of Sky Poker was on, and there was a whole lesbian kiss in the background, which was gone. gone. <laughs> yeah, I went to the Eternals in uh, Abu Dhabi. I'm make it <laughs> and, and the movie was 30 minutes long. It was so weird. <laughs> Odd. Hey, hey, but every Hollywood is saved. The strikes are over, almost over. And uh, there's a new crop of writers coming up, and no disrespect to any of these other writers, but I just wanted to point out, Ryan's already done a video on this. Uh, pretty sure Yellow Flash has too, but hail Ryan. Love you, buddy. I put a like on that video too. <laughs> you almost had the 1,000 to none. You, uh, you almost did it.
Okay. It was close. It was close. It was, it was close. Uh, Variety's uh, 10 screenwriters to watch out for. Now, this, to be fair to Variety, this might be a warning. Like, hey, watch out for these awards. <laughs> <laughs> watch out, man. Include scribes for <laughs> the Marvels. Wow. Oh, my God. Uh... What? How's that working out so far? You are so <laughs> similar the to the, Honestly, the, the comedians I, watch list they put out every year. It, and it's it just is. like the pre-screened, pre-approved. It's garbage. Folks. These people will kill your film. Watch <laughs> out. <laughs> Daryl Marvel's Hall got a restraining has, order on yeah. oats. Yeah, so that's that man. Mean, you, know, you know, Marvel's Tragic. has bombed so bad, you'd be embarrassed to have your name attached to that. Like, even if you were just like, I don't know, a copy editor or something like that, that's associated with the writing quality of the Marvel's, I would want my name removed. You know what John Oates said about that suit? He said, I can't go for that. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, go. I got I you, dude. Say- uh okay so um you gotta you scroll know, way down to find you gotta her. scroll way down one of the writers got, I hope, I, I, the one on the left the kind of chubby girl she's writing um red sonia and i hope she's great i really want her to be great because i want a good red sonia movie but um this one yeah she's that's, writing red sonia red sonia that's Ugh. still getting made i thought that was okay. well they, they they change directions and they are going towards the source material and i do believe it's being directed by the guy who did solomon kane right so okay. she's like, doing Red Sonia, Naruto, and animated, Tomb animated to oh, wow. Tomb Raider. I hope she's the greatest writer. I just I please, have my doubt. Please don't fuck okay. it up. Um, but yeah, if we go down to the Marvel's writer, who is uh, Karen McPlainface or whatever her name is, uh, <laughs> there, there it is. Yeah, um, she should never work in Hollywood again. There's there other jobs. White girl. Yeah, that little white girl. Uh, what else she's she done? She's done something else horrific apart from the Marvels as well. well and now she's, she's being promoted to Tomb Raider with Phoebe yeah. Waller Bridge. Like wanted program. So never That's mind. A mess made in hell, dude. I just heard. <laughs> I just heard Melanie Mac scream. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Melanie yeah. Mac on fucking Suicide Watch, mate. Aww. Right. Somebody mm. do a wellness oh. check on Melanie, please. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, she one worked division. on One Division. Was my first professional writing job. That's oh, all you need to know. Wow. Agatha. Oh, what? <laughs> Agatha. Agatha. Wait, uh, what? Agatha. Was my first professional writing job. Well, there I can tell. Wow. What about like a big, like an entry level writing job? Yeah, wait. <laughs> well, she was. The are these people not? Podcast. Are these people not having like entry level jobs where they write yeah. for an article or write a book or write a well, like? Jared, this is your I, first. I, she produced your experience. She produced, she I'm a white podcast. woman. What was that, Ryan? <laughs> she produced a podcast. Um, oh well. Wow. 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 <laughs> to be fair, X-ray X-ray girls start no. writing. <laughs> to be fair, it's it's not like a podcast with us. It's a podcast with Craig Mazin from HBO. So, you know, so what year did the like, podcast come out? Oh, she's not as qualified as X Ray Girl. That's what you're saying. Yeah, I was yeah. To be Maybe. fair, Gary, I think okay. she could actually write a decent Spider Man at this point. Yeah. Um. Wow. That's crazy. I mean, so, so she, this is failing upward. Happens mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. Let's not forget um, this is her, her first job. That was her first job out of Harvard. Was a uh, podcast producer. Mm-hmm. Wow, a, what a waste of Harvard. money! Why go to Harvard? Becomes podcast producer. Got it. Uh, I would say rich family. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Was she rich the family connections? Writer? Boom. Yes. Yeah. Was she the principal writer for the like? The Marvels, like the primary writer, or was it, it was three? No, it was Nia Costa was the primary, I believe. Yeah. Ooh, she she yeah. just came in and uh, destroyed it even more. If if you clean the toilets on the set of the Marvels, you should never work in Jan uh, be a janitor again. <laughs> if you That's you right there, you Gary. Should never cater for a film again. If you train the fucking cats, you should never train. In Hollywood, ever again, and for I, sure, never tell anybody about it. No, oh, no. I worked on no. the Marvels. You know the film that lost all that money. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, if if she wanted to go, I'm one to watch like, for. Say, if porn decided <laughs> to bring scripted entertainment back, if they wanted to start scripting porn, maybe work your way up from there, and and talk to me in ten years. But like, no way should she be near anything. Tomb Raider's dead. Oh, dead. Yeah. Never mind. She'd kill up that script. Stick a, stick a stake in it. Make sure it doesn't rise from the dead. I know, yeah. right? I agree. Were the multiple cats her idea? Probably. Oh. 
It's a collective idea between all of the. <laughs> That'd be great if that was our claim to fame. So old. I, I suggested the cats. <laughs> One cat is good. Fifty is better. You know what I'm thankful for this year, guys? Mm. I don't have to watch the Marvels ever again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know, Gary. It'll do really well for your channel if you got another one. You want to get that million? Know. I don't know if they're marbles. But the funny thing oh, is, Gary, nobody's going to be watching this movie ever again either. So, I mean, just watch it for the first time. <laughs> Physical media, guys. Buy the marbles. Oh, boy. Oh, you, oh, God. Ryan, you know there's going to be an article. The most watched oh, movie. Plus shit. The Marvels. Yes. Oh yeah, the, the most streamed yeah. thing this week or whatever. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the the last that you said is working on Red Sonia. Um, one of her writing credits also oh, is no. The Witcher Blood Origin. Oh, for oh, oh no! no. <laughs> oh, it's fucked. Oh. All hope is lost. <laughs> oh well, Red Sonia's fucked. <laughs> She's also a writer on the animated. Uh, Lara Croft Tomb Raider, which is uh, fucking looking like absolute hot garbage. Oh yeah, the one where it looks like a dude. Yeah, so, a dude. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Um, I am Lara, and I'm lesbicaning. Uh, just to transition over to The Witcher briefly. Uh, oh. Yes, some uh, Sapowski. Uh, Sapowski. What the fuck? Why am I blanking on his name now? Andre. Andre Sapowski. Sapowski. Mm -hmm. Sapowski. Um, he can't. Yeah, the writer for The Witcher, the books. Mm -hmm. It's a Polish name, dude. Okay. You would know. It's Sapkowski, it's, it's Sap, it's yeah. Sapkowski. Sapkowski. I, I just, <laughs> it's not like you were saying Sipkowski, and I'm like, Sipkowski? Sipkowski, yeah, he kind of is, if you've read the Witcher mm. books. It's a little simpy when it comes to women. All right, it's... it's Not wrong with that, mate. I mean, nope. not in it, as much as making you women fucking, you know. But, uh, oh, yeah, wow. he's, he's uh, unsurprisingly said that uh, uh, Laura... Hisridge Schmidt uh, didn't listen to him, and neither did Netflix. Well, that's kind of apparent oh, by watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too bad you didn't Gary. say that two years ago. Uh, you know, and maybe Henry and the writer. He he even said, "There's an interview." Uh, Ryan, uh, I think did you cover it on your on a video or was it? Uh, it was a video, yeah. yeah, where he's he goes. I went on the set. And they wouldn't listen to me. And I'm like, all I am is the writer of the book. I mean, I, they didn't give a shit. Yeah, it's like, it's normal. Who, who's this guy giving us instructions? Oh, he's just the writer. Oh, don't listen to him. No big deal. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, he's famously a bad businessman. He got, he fucked himself over with the game deal, but. Uh, Massively so. Oh, well. Did he turn down a percentage profit deal on the games? Because yeah, like, I'll never be flop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 35 <laughs> million <laughs> copies sold later <laughs> oh, which, is why I think he, which is why i think he was down for the netflix series yep um because oh. uh, he was man. down in a syndrome kind of There's a way an animated that. witcher coming out pretty soon like an anime witcher with Geralt on netflix on netflix yeah with Geralt. Yeah. Mm. witcher author uh says netflix never listened to his ideas <laughs> uh, it showed yeah, yeah. Trouble I'm trouble looking trouble. at the casting of Yennefer and going, yes, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that um, is not yeah. a flattering picture of Yennefer in that one. Uh, franchise author Andre. They wanted to challenge beauty norms. Says the streamer didn't need <laughs> his suggestions for the show, uh, which he, uh, which has been plagued by uproars over deviations from source from its source material. Yeah, you know when you take your main character, known as the Witcher. <sighs> And you make him the fourth lead uh, behind a bunch of feminist fantasy uh, race swapped heroes uh, written by soap opera writers. I would say that's deviating from the we're source. We're talking point. about Blade or The Witcher? Yes. <laughs> Both. Oh, well. yes. <laughs> we're talking about Rings of Power. We're talking about Wheel of Time. Star Wars. About, uh, yes, Willow. Star Wars. Willow. Willow. Um, Holy crap. <laughs> Put a chick Don't in it and make it gay. They put two <laughs> chicks in them and made them both gay. And, uh, that was the and now the show doesn't know. exist anymore. Yeah. No. Oh no, what happened? Oh no, it's terrible. <laughs> What's happened uh, so to all of our franchises? Hey, how's Wish doing at the box office there, uh, Odin? Oh, it's it's uh it's it's doing poorly. Uh, is I think a kind word. Uh, Wishing say, it could be better. <laughs> <laughs> Black yeah, girl yeah. and a goat. Uh, the, uh, honestly, the, the best thing that I've seen about this whole thing, though, is the fact that for the Thanksgiving Day box office numbers, Wish came in third place behind Napoleon. 
Whoa. Hey. Oh. So Sorry, I've place. heard rumors that they like made Napoleon a cuck or something like that. Is that true? Is it a good film? As you've well, seen it, as yeah, I've seen the it, the seen the film. The film is is good. It has its issues because it tries to deal with too much subject matter over a period of time, and therefore can't really focus uh, on on the because uh, it pretty much goes through almost all of his major battles. Uh, now, if you know history and the relationship with Napoleon and, and Josephine, um, I thought the film did that okay. I think it did it all right, because, yes, she was, like most people in those times, you know, they took lovers when their husbands were away. This wasn't a new thing. Uh, Josephine was more promiscuous than most. Uh, anyway, she's, she's, she, she's got a reputation. Uh, for that so there was there was the whole relationship with napoleon and josephine which actually i thought we ended up quite endearing towards the end um so so it, it, it i didn't feel that they were trying to cock hold him or anything like that I, I think they were just telling the story the way you know history probably sort of actually did uh turn out but things like waterloo was was so skipped over uh, in terms oh, really? of the amount of time, yeah, oh, yeah, really? yeah, because like... you know, the, like the whole, f you know, you could have made the whole film concentrating on on you know that day and and the losses and yeah. uh, and everything and how the French w were completely dominating the British and then the That's British like not showing the bomb in an Oppenheimer movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, as was Napoleon a short film? Hey, it's actually a it's actually a um a myth that Napoleon was a short man. What? He was he was just sort of average. Yeah, advertising. Uh, kind of, oh, he, yeah, he was five six. In that time, he was short. He was so. five six, which is pretty average height for that yeah. time. But yeah. French measurements uh, were a little bit different than English measurements. So, like when the British saw it, it looked like he was five two, but that was just because wow. the French units are slightly longer. Uh, but the the cinematography is incredible. Um, the costumes are, are fantastic. The acting was absolutely top notch. A uh, bit of ropey CGI here and there. His exploding horse looked absolutely appalling. Uh, I wish they'd done that a little bit practic more practically. Well, but, no one uh, would have right no in the heart. Too. I, uh, <laughs> slow that fucker up. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't quite know what. Get over here, Sea you Biscuit. Know, <laughs> Ridley, Ridley Scott has uh, he's done some big ass misses. He's eighty five. Yeah. Is he now? You know. Wow. So how how is he holding up? It wasn't it wasn't bad. I'd, I'd give it a solid uh, seven seven and a half out of ten. All right, oh, Mike, all right. give it a watch. That's interesting. Yes, I've never seen watch a friend in the theater. Unit. I'm not, yay! <laughs> this, I, sign fresh this headline, though, <laughs> this headline, though, is, is is insane to me. The idea that Wish, this is a yes. major, mm -hmm. major Disney film, an animated yeah. film. When was the last time you saw an, an animated film open third to anything? Like, For, that, it's crazy. Like on a holiday. Thing, and this yeah, is their 100th anniversary movie. Yep. Oof. Yes. And it's, it's fast. It's, I mean, I grew up with Disney just like all y'all, you know, I went to go see Little Mermaid and Aladdin and all those great classics. And, and this is so incomprehensible to see that they've fallen so far. And I think it's just a, a state that people are done. People are done. And you guys mm -hmm. know this, you guys are all smart. You guys have experienced this all, but I think it's just, they're having trouble figuring out what to do next because they have no idea. I mean, they were playing on nostalgia in a major way on this movie. Mm -hmm. It's a hundred. I, I saw a review that said it best. It said this was supposed to be a uh, a celebration of Disney Disney's one hundred years. Instead, it was a celebration of Disney's one hundredth year. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it, it absolutely does. And it's a bunch of boomers uh, who don't watch their own shit, relying on Zoomers who don't re watch their own shit. Like none yeah. none of these people watch their stuff. That are yeah, gliding probably. on the the talent of people that are long gone, mm -hmm. like ten years gone, like that, that's what in the eighties when Little Mermaid came out, it was gone. talented people that brought that brought Disney back up from bankruptcy, right? And then they coasted on that with talent for about fifteen years, maybe twenty years, and then it just kind of turned into buy other properties 
and make other things that were successful not successful anymore. And that's what Yellow, we've been seeing for the last like 10 years. Yellow Flash had a good, um, he did a good review of Wish. He said it was supposed to be uh, like, you know, when you wish upon a star, it was supposed to be this like classic story, but apparently it was oh, taken over by activists who then changed it and made it about like overthrowing a sort of whatever the patriarchy of, of the yeah. movie or that society mm -hmm. was. Just white male patriarchy so, nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's been some uh, some people who worked initially worked on the project uh, who have contacted other people anonymously, like right after it was released and just like we had nothing to do with this. This got completely usurped and uh, it shouldn't surprise anybody. That's that's uh, that's that's what's been happening to all of our favorite franchises. Just look at that story group. You know, you were talking about 42 uh, or 40 whatever executives at Lucasfilm. How many people are in the story group? It's Ryan, is it 15, 20? Uh, less than that. Less I think it's like 10. I think yeah. it's like 10. Well, that's yeah. about 10 too many. But it, uh, is, well, it yeah. is 10 too many. It is. But like the thing that we've talked about this a lot, but the budgets, man, that's really what this comes down to. It's the budgets. It's it's. It, Wish could come out and make you know two three hundred million dollars if it had a seventy five hundred million dollar budget. I mean, the Super Mario Brothers movie had a hundred million dollar budget. I don't understand how Mario can have a hundred million dollar budget and Wish is having a two hundred million dollar. I don't understand that. It doesn't make sense to me. Load. None of this. I mean, if Five Nights at Freddy's had a fucking if yeah. Five Nights at Freddy's <laughs> had a hundred and fifty million dollar budget, nobody's gonna be talking about the success of it. Mm -hmm. But it had a twenty million dollar budget, mm -hmm. so the success. It's all relative to that. I mm -hmm. don't get how these budgets are so out of control. Where is the money going? That's what I want to know. Where Where is $100 million more into Wish going that the Mario movie didn't need with an iconic brand, one of the biggest actors in Hollywood, a really good supporting cast, massive IP, and yet a, a significantly less money in that movie versus wish i don't get it i think part of it with these movies is that it's over self-indulgence being one of them uh money laundering probably being another thing like as mentioned and the fact that they have to go reshoot a bunch of shit so i mean they end up turning into big money sinks not going towards talent that's for sure that's for damn sure let them okay it's going to the ukraine yeah, let yeah. them burn. I'm with you as yeah. like they've made yeah. their bed, they can sleep in it, and I'm all for Disney's and Hollywood's destruction at the moment. Yeah. And we'll as get Kirk independent. The quicker they burn themselves to the ground, the quicker we're going to get change. Maybe yep. Yep. you got to hit bottom. You got to yep. hit bottom, and they're they're hitting bottom. Uh, they got to hit for the when the when the ground. um when the shareholder when their shareholder goes enough. That's what they need to hit. Because they'll go down further beyond. They they would die on this hill. Oh yeah, I oh, mean, yeah. look no. at what what they're projected. They're, they're still making like the Acolyte and and the Daisy Ridley one, and you know the I all everything that they've still lined up. It's, it's still being made, and they're just uh, good. That in Marvel, going, look at all Disney. the things that they're still Keep planning. God, you're yeah. absolutely right. We are way beyond the point of everything should be canceled. There should be <laughs> people who run these studios and the subsidiaries, Marvel, Lucasfilm. They should be pounding on their desk, going, "Cancel everything! What the fuck is going stop, on here?" Stop, it's it would already be more, dead. It would be more <laughs> yeah. profitable for them right now to write them off as tax yes. as tax losses. Yep. It would be more profitable. Clean your fucking slate. Just yeah. clean it off. Because even though they only have that. like they a one film coming out yeah. next summer, like as the next like major Disney film, you look ahead and they still got films coming out till 2027, and they're all massive 200 plus million dollar budgeted movies. Oh, so it's just so repeat that, Odin. Stupid. The next Disney movie comes yeah, so, out in how long? So the next like Disney specific film uh, is Inside Out two, and that comes out June of, and, of next year. And then if you jump over to their 20th Century Studios. Their next film isn't until April with The First Omen, which is a horror film, and then Kingdom of the Planet oh, of the Apes in May. What? The First so, Omen? <laughs> yes. So, have you guys heard rumors all about... All sequels, um, by the way. Oh, all of those. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, have you heard rumors about Inside Out 2? What they might do to, you know, the main character and things? No. I have. Ooh, it, it, it sounded okay. like she's going through, like, she's, uh, like, she's going through, uh, fucking puberty Gender or something, right? Mm. Uh, I, I was gonna say, is it I've heard rumors that it could be a they very do? laden with the message in what she deals Ooh. with. Didn't they already do a movie like that? Like seeing red or whatever the hell it's called? Yeah, well, I think they this did, one is. 
Yeah, so this one is like all the emotions or whatever, and then all of a sudden, like anxiety and like all this crazy shit shows up as she becomes a teenager or something. So I, I don't know if it's necessarily about like the period, but I just think that like during I that don't time trust in Disney life, to tell a good story with plan? that premise. Nope. Mm. Well, I, 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 oh, go ahead. I just made it. Bad joke, and I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, That's but what it we is, do here. It is weird, like seeing the like Sound of Freedom, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's, and I talked about Battle Bit Remastered, which is a game made by three people that sold three million copies. B people like simplicity. Uh, they don't. They don't like all this overly produced bullshit. Um, and again, it's it's just like I've said with like the YouTube world. People don't want this overly produced mainstream media bullshit. They just want authenticity. They want to they want to see people that are being real talking about real things. And people don't want to see this overly produced CG bullshit. It, the, the bubble has popped. And now people are looking. Word of mouth has never been more, more relevant than it is now. Word of mouth matters. It carries. This is why Top Gun Maverick... Uh, Top Gun Maverick had a pretty good opening weekend, but no one in their right mind thought it was going to make whatever it made one point. What did it make? One point five, something like that. Even more than Barbie. Even more insane was yeah. It, yeah. Like in the teens, was its week one to week two drop. Yeah, which which is insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so so the word of mouth took that uh, and, and people ran with it. Oppenheimer is another one. No one thought Oppenheimer was making nine hundred fifty million dollars. Not even the biggest Nolan fanboy thought that was possible, and yet you see it happening but on the flip side of that the marvel cinematic universe has fallen apart because people are the people that are seeing it they're, they're not raving about it to the level the general public anyway it's not it's not connecting to the general public anymore so so it's just a dying breed of uh, again it's the overly produced bullshit i think when people see something authentic it it connects with them and they go out there and they see it. And honestly, the smaller the budget, the more authentic a project is because the more care that goes into it, the more passion that goes into it, the more you have a $300 million movie. It's all AI. It's all fucking CGI. Nobody gives a shit. You're hiring activists and people that are trying to capitalize off of shit. When you have a smaller budget, you have people that actually have to work their ass off to create something special. And that translates over into the final product. Yesterday so. we binge watched the whole they did a squid game like reality TV show and we watched like five or six episodes in a row. I mean, nobody is gets killed, unfortunately, oh. but like <laughs> it's ex it's exciting. It's so funny to see the reasons why people eliminate. It's just like it's just like a bunch of black lesbians be like, I don't like these white guys, but it's funny because like they'll just say it. Uh, it's I don't know. It was very binge bingeable. You know, speaking of that. Uh, I need to watch that, by the way, Chrissy. Uh, I've heard of good things. Um, but speaking of Disney, I, I always like to look at data as far as people, how how sick people are of everything. And you go, if you were to go back nine years to where Disney was, as far as strictly looking at, you, you mentioned uh, the, the stakeholders of the company, right? Uh, where if you would have made money, if you would have invested nine years ago. Now, keep in mind, nine years ago, we're just off the release of the original Frozen in 2013. We're beginning Massive. to, you know. We're, we're, we're growing at this point. Uh, we've got uh, Need for Speed. We got Captain America, Winter Soldier. And this is a this is a point where Disney's they're they're growing at this point. Their stock is going up. Guardians and, of the Galaxy. Bingo, Guardians of the Galaxy. So nine years ago, if you were to invest literally nine years ago today, you would have lost money on your investment from from nine years ago to today. Whew. Now, obviously, there were tremendous ups in 2020. It peaked through the streaming wars. But since then, if you look at the, the, the catastrophic drop going from $193 a share to today being at 96, almost a halving in, over mm -hmm. the course of just three years, give me a company that is, that's value has, has dropped half over the last three years. And I'm going to show you a, a failure. You know, that's mm -hmm. what we're looking at here. You yep. know? Absolutely. Well, well, speaking of data here, uh, the up. autists on Reddit uh -huh. came together and uh, puts this put this data together. This is the average of three movies, rolling average of three movies uh, throughout the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And you can see that it, it peaked phase three in game and then started dropping and dropping and dropping. Mm -hmm. And now we're lower than anywhere since phase one. And we already know that, but this it's great to see the data kind of show we are past the peak. We're on our way down. Yes, if, decline. If they have a massive movie that comes out that's really great and everybody loves it, 
I don't think that will save it. No, because we need no. like four or five or six of those in a row. No we way home. Yeah, yeah, no way home couldn't save it. Right. <laughs> no. That and nothing. They nothing is going to come out right. that's going to match that. Jeremy, nothing. That's a great point. Nothing but, will even come close. And all that did is that was a short term gain. That was part of a, a more of a long. And we loss. said that's what it would be. Yeah, we, yeah. we said like this doesn't this doesn't turn anything around. You needed Toby and Andrew Garfield and all the Spider Men together, and uh, it still didn't. You know it, that goodwill did carry over to Doctor Strange Mom, but then it died right after that. Mm -hmm. People saw the movie. It, what was Doctor Strange Mom's second week drop? Sixty nine percent, something like something. At the big. time, it was the nice. biggest, and yeah. every other film came out, and then it kept. You know, beating. <laughs> That's actually a good point. That's actually a good point. If you guys remember that, when Doctor Strange, uh, Multiverse of Madness, when that had that second week drop, we were all like, oh, 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 this looks really bad for Marvel. Looking back on that, I bet they would give their left nut if they could get a drop like that. Like mm -hmm. that, that now we've, re we've gone so far beyond that, which is kind of crazy to think about how bad it looked at the time and how good it would look right now if they were getting those types of drops. It's one thing to have a drop like that after a massive opening. And, and Doctor Strange had a pretty big opening. I think it, it did. Yeah. It opened to $450 million worldwide. It was insane. But then, but then it only it ended. It never made at, 900. It ended at 950 yeah, million. Yeah, it didn't make so a billion. It, after that massive opening weekend, it only made twice that, essentially. It, we had a character from Spider Man No Way Home in his own movie. Everybody thought Marvel sold it like this as much as they want to like try the revisionist history that it would absolutely connect and it would start explaining the multiverse and we all started looking at it and then we walked out of it going that sucked mm. that, that was terrible and it didn't explain shit yeah uh made things more confusing and uh here we are we we had the reset of the multiverse like three times since then and uh does anybody know what the fucking multiverse is no Kang. fucking clue no, it's all about Kang. It's it, it, it contradicts how they explain the multiverse in separate kind of properties at this point. Yeah. They have no idea what they're doing with that. And, and fans out there, I'm not conflating. Do not conflate it with the comic books because Disney Marvel doesn't give a fuck about the comic books. What Within the context of the MCU, have they explained the multiverse at all? There's time no. travel. There's other dimensions. Space there's quantum fighting. dimensions. There's threads. There's, there's the like, founts of youth. They kind of gloss over you? that in... You know, oh, when yeah. they they make them younger <laughs> with a laser because it was it was incorrectly uh, made. It's like, oh wait, you have the fountain of youth here, and you're just gonna gloss over that. Okay. I sit corrected, chat. Black girl magic. They did explain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my! They just did. think we're we're in a fucking we're living in a fucking world <laughs> where Nick fucking Fury says in a three hundred twenty million dollar movie, black girl fucking magic. <laughs> <laughs> I could not believe it. I didn't think that was going to happen. fucking burning money, you fucking knobheads! <laughs> and then they're getting promoted! Here! I'm uh, going to fuck Lara Croft in the ass! Go right ahead! <laughs> All fucking yours, tuts! They have gone a little far in a few places. Why is the god keep doing it? can burn your fucking business down to the ground! Burn it! Fucking you're pouring paraffin on yourself and everyone else and going, yay. You know that fucking Zoolander thing at the beginning? <laughs> there is a fucking gas station. That's Disney. Yeah. Yeah. A gasoline fight <laughs> accident. <laughs> <laughs> There's somebody's like, this. just do it. Do it, please. We're fucking begging you. You're yes. there. You're calling everyone this, that, and the other on fucking social media. You're doing all your puff pieces with Vanity Fair and Forbes and all that fucking lot. Calling us all this, that, and the other as well. Meanwhile, nobody's watching your fucking shit. <laughs> Nobody. No Please, fucking Disney, women, don't no stop. fucking men, no black people, <laughs> no white it. people, no brown people, no gay people, no straight people, no burnt sienna people. Nobody's watching it because it's shit. Especially women, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Look at yourself. Just look in the fucking mirror. You fucking murdering pedo rapists. 
And, and, and Disney, uh, like we said, don't don't stop. Keep doing what you're doing. You do you. Exactly. Keep losing money. We'll be fine. Yeah. I find it so funny that that they can't help themselves. Like, surely you think someone would have figured out that attacking the fans and calling them, you know, racist and stuff isn't a model that works. It just pisses them off and makes people not want to watch it. But then the director of the Marvels, what does she do? She just comes out and starts calling people racist because they're not liking the well, film. It's, it's about the message. Man. It's not about profit, which is the reason why they continue to do this shit. They, they legit don't care. Yeah. They're, gonna, they're all yeah. activists. Yeah, yeah, they're all activists. Yeah. And, 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 and it's like what we saw the whole thing with, with um, JPEG. JPEG's like, we're not going to get involved with this shit. And, and the Disney employees are like, oh, yes, we are. And they actually force his hand and force him to get involved. Yeah, somebody in the chat so. called him Bob Paycheck. <laughs> yeah, Bob, Bob Paycheck. Paycheck. That's great. Yeah. That's Bob pretty Paycheck anymore. You know what? I, uh, he's doing great. He's sitting on some Caribbean island getting blown by hookers and yep. he's the fall guy and he's got all the money in the world. He ain't yep. worried about it. And he yeah, doesn't have he's to doing fine. Or Disney anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> Bob Iger got fucked himself on that one. I know. He's, he's got such a dumpster fire that he is homing now. It's like, an good idiot. luck, mate. Uh, I got I got a hypothetical for y'all real quick. All right. All right. The, hypoth the hypothetical is that these people have, their egos are obviously so big that they, they're going to force their way in. They're going to force their thoughts, their agenda into all everything that they do. Right. But let's just say they get sick and tired of nerd Roddick talking about all this, all these things that are wrong. You know, Jeremy talking about, Oh gosh. And they, they're like, listen, we're going to listen to them. And then they, then they, uh, they, they, reverts and they actually listen to you guys they bring you guys in they do some you do some story consulting and and you you end up you know they, they release something that you guys like and but it's it's all built around their ego do you ever see a, uh <laughs> i guess the question is do you do you would you give up your channel your livelihood to correct some of these uh <laughs> some of no. these major errors hell no, no. no. Channel, but uh like if they asked me mm. to talk to them you know like off channel like I, okay, I, I mean, if, if I if if I got like a job there and like some sort of control over there, I'd be you know willing to give some stuff up. But the, yeah, it, yeah, that's has, I still wouldn't. An I'd keep my channel. Me. Real quick though, uh, I have been asked, and and I've offered. I said, you know what, I'll, I'll buy you lunch if you want to sit down and fucking talk. I don't want to do some streaming thing, but if you actually legitimately want to talk and it's something that's within my wheelhouse, sure, I'll do it. It'll never fucking happen. Not in a million years. There's a bunch of fans you can talk to uh, who would give you the same advice I would, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'd have, I wouldn't give up my channel though. No. I, I, yeah. the I wouldn't give it up. Drex, Drex, Drex has been trying to talk to me for a year, for a year. <laughs> and we agreed to speak off camera. I had agreed. Well, have a chat. You know, if he really, I need to see the show first before we talk. That was the condition. I got to see it first. I can't talk from position of not no power. So even before the the um, you know before he did all his fucking mental breakdown shit, uh, we we had agreed that we were going to talk the week after before he had all this mental breakdown fucking shit. I said you know if he, if he wants to have a conversation, let's have a conversation. We'll talk about. So that was that was good. We were just literally bouncing forth DMs in I, uh, I in Instagram to to work out a time uh, and a day that was fine because he's in Canada and I'm in the fucking UK or or New Zealand wherever you want to fucking put me in Papua New Guinea <laughs> and. Uh, and then, literally, as he, he as one of his messages was just like, "Oh, I'm good for whatever time you want." Uh, then it came out, Director X. Everyone who doesn't like my show is a racist. And I was just like, "Oh, right, okay." So to me, that means no good faith. So if you've got no good faith whatsoever, that's the way you want to start a fucking conversation. You don't want to. You don't want to talk. These people don't want to talk, Craig. You, you you mention ego. That's what they've got. They hate Gary. They hate Critical Drinker. Not the smart ones. The smart ones like Drinker because they're actually listening. But the smart ones are the ones who aren't using ideology to destroy things. Right. They're the people who are in the industry who are trying to bypass this ideological shit to actually get their talent, get their creative vision out there. That's why they're listening to someone like Drinker. But the people that, that you're most likely referencing, they're, they're the ones who don't have the talent. You need to you need to cost us and shit. You know, they ain't got their fucking talent. Have you seen a fucking dog shit? She got nothing. She shouldn't have been let anywhere near a fucking major Hollywood film. Never mind something of the region of two, three hundred million, three twenty million. No, no, it's, it's hubris with them. They're mad at people like Gary, geeks and gamers, whoever, drinker, yada yada, because they actually know the shit. We know the genres. We mm. know the. We know how fucking structure works. We know how heroes work. They don't. And so, in talking to us, it, it exposed their weaknesses. 
They don't want to do that. They're coasting. They're coasting whatever they want to do right now, whether it be ideology, whether it be me fucking too, whether it be the color of their fucking skin, but they're coasting on superficiality and they're in an industry that loves superficiality because it's yep. superficial. I got a great example to what you're talking about because there actually are competent people who have tried to help these people out. And the perfect example is the Wheel of Time TV show. Brandon Sanderson, he is one of the best fantasy authors in the world. He finished off the Wheel of Time TV show. Uh, sorry, sorry, the Wheel of Time book series, right? He was a consultant on the Wheel of Time and he has shared some of his notes and feedbacks that he gave them. And he is such a talented writer. You like, if you're getting notes from Brandon Sanderson on how to, you know, adapt a show, you should be friggin' listening. It mm -hmm. is astounding, absolutely shocking the amount that he was ignored. And and he he warned them, like, all right, this is a bad choice. You should not do this. I, I'm really worried if you do do this. I'm really worried if you do that. He even said in season one, you're making all the main characters feel like assholes, right? And and season two, there were like there were some drastically unbelievably stupid things, and he actually was trying to tell them not to, and they had such arrogance. The showrunners, people making this show, had such arrogance and such hubris that they not only they they did not listen to him, right? Because they felt they could do better than one of the most celebrated fantasy authors in the world. They actually think they could do better, and of course, it was a steaming pile of crap. Yeah, you uh, look goofy. One and see. <laughs> 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 Season two ended horribly. Now, in terms of so so. People have been trying to tell them they don't listen. The only way you could do like, I would need creative control. And I'm having fun making my own novels and graphic novels. There's probably only one property where I would be willing to put everything I'm working on on hold. I wouldn't give it up. I'll come back to it on hold to actually produce a show to make sure it's done right. And that's actually Wheel of Time. I, to, I would start from season one, scrap everything. And I love that property so much. To see it done well, I would be willing to put everything on hold, take the reins, do it myself and i could guarantee i could do a for not like so like it's not hard to do a better job than the current adaptation because it's dog crap but i could guarantee i could do a good job with that uh, yeah unfortunately the political environment in hollywood even if somebody who was genuine came to you as a consultant wouldn't a be able to push through those ideas because mm -hmm. in all reality even with drinker you know most respected name in film criticism right now e even in hollywood Last time I was there, everybody brought up Drinker. Drinker's number one, right? Uh, even with Drinker, if you associate yourself with his name, our name, Jeremy's name, uh, all of a sudden they're running out saying, I'm not affiliated. And they got to unfollow us on Twitter and shit like that. And like, we we can't even get, if somebody has to unfollow somebody on fucking Twitter, we're nowhere near being able to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. following somebody on Twitter does not endorse everything that no. person. It's so retarded oh. to think that. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just. Yeah. How, I'm such a bad person for being on the show today. By the way, I've had people on <laughs> absolutely. Me yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, especially welcome, after welcome, the intro of this show. Well, welcome to the party. As someone that did try to work with a Hollywood director uh -huh. and had literally the best intentions humanly possible and tried to be as transparent about my controversial take and why it's probably not a good idea to work with you, you to work with me to put it all on the table and it was still like oh it's fine man no big deal and it what still was your controversial take jeremy uh my controversial take was that uh we don't need identity politics in movies <laughs> that's that pretty much it yeah, to me i know well, actually yeah. and and so um and and so that completely backfired or blew up uh in you know so it just there's no point there's no point i don't like talking to any of these people look everybody knows i'm a nintendo fan i don't need to fucking be in contact with nintendo i don't give a shit um i know how nintendo treats their ambassadors anyway i'm not really in it for that i was just i, I got not to bring politics up that i was just at a trump rally and everybody's asked me get access get access i don't fucking want access I, and i've said this like i don't give a shit about meeting trump i don't give a shit i'll sit in the cheap seats with the fucking people i don't mm. deserve access i'm just a fucking retarded youtuber okay if good things come my way in time that'll be great i'm not looking to benefit from any of that stuff so you're not like a scene I don't, star you know yeah, i don't need that shit up. yeah i don't you're need all that shit fucker. you know like like dave fucking rubin go to mar-a-lago and take a fucking picture he's a weak bitch okay he always has been and he doesn't believe in any of that shit and i don't want to be in that crowd of people so I don't care about talking to famous people. I don't care about talking to companies. If, 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 if that happens, that'll be great. 
But at no point in time has that never been my intention. I'm talking with the people I want to talk to right now on Friday Night Tights. I'm talking with the people in the chat. That's who I care about. I don't care about anybody else. I no. tried to give Hollywood the benefit of the doubt one time. It blew up in my face. Never again. Fuck them all. That's no, that's why when, I, when we talk, if it's genuine, it's like we'll talk, you know, on a phone call or something. But I'm not going to do some stupid dog and pony show on a streamer. And the only thing I'll make an effort for at all is meetups. That's yep. the only thing I will, I, I, I will pay for them. I will go out that way. I just had a great meetup here in Wisconsin. I don't understand how you people can live here because it's fucking pitch black at 4.15 in the afternoon. But that's on the side. <laughs> Welcome um, to the UK. I know. <laughs> <laughs> God, uh, no, it, it was, that's the only thing we'll make efforts for, you know, and uh, we got a con coming up in LA and I think it's important. Like there's a con that's got, there's a couple of cons, Fan Expo in Dallas. Uh, what's the one, I'm sorry. What's the one in Orlando, Jeremy? What's the mega one? Megacon, Megacon, uh, Megacon, Megacon and LA Comic Con have the fucking balls to have us on panels. Yep. And uh, we, we have two panels in LA. One, uh, thanks to Chris Gore, by the way, hail Chris Gore. We have one that's called 99, all 90, 99% of all movies today are garbage and the death of the modern franchise. <laughs> panels, so I, I feel it, it's obligatory to go. Mm. Right. When Last are those? Uh, it's uh, next weekend. Next weekend where I'm, I'm turning right around and going to LA uh, to go to those and it's going to be fun, you know, and then in February there's Megacon, right? Yep. And, mm -hmm. and there's Eric's going to be there, Geeks and Gamers. If I don't go on my other trip, then I'll be there. Um, Ripoverse will be there, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Be there, it's going to so. be, and, and, and I think it's great. I, that, like, you know, it doesn't mean don't have your other, have your stupid diversity panels all day long. Don't care. But if you, if you allow, you know, the rest of the fans to talk, that's good. That's, that's where change happens, right? So yeah. I think it's important. I, I, I'm not, I, I don't want any panels banned. If you want to have a diversity, inclusion, representation, yep. bullshit panel, I'm all for it. As long as you're willing to allow anyone else that has a different opinion, that same panel. I don't want to ban anybody's panel. I, mm -hmm. If you want to go sit, if you want to have eight fucking losers go and listen to a diversity, inclusion, and representation panel, let them fucking There's do it. Four. I don't care. Like, like, But don't tell other people they can't have their opinions and their mm -hmm. ideas. Uh, share. I, I, I want the Thunderdome. I want everybody's ideas out mm -hmm. there and then let the, and let the people's voices uh, have the feedback. So you can go in there, you can have your diversity panel panel and you can talk bad about white people all day long that's fine as long as everybody else can have their yeah. voice that's you that's my that's my not more that's and by the way just to show the sea of change that yes. has happened over the four years garrett and i were with john f trent at new york comic-con and garrett what panel did we sit in it was fighting fascism and fandom <laughs> <laughs> sorry how what oh hold on a minute wait a minute hold, hold up wait a minute how, how <laughs> can fans right. be fascist that's a good question i still don't know we watched the whole thing we watched it, was, it, was, just, it was basically a a, 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 ne a photo negative reverse of like a clan rally that's what it was but they don't yes. own the ip so if they don't own the ip have no control of the ip what it produces who's hired how can they be fascistic it's because they're the fascists, the ones that are putting this exactly. panel. Exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was the most fascist. Now, this shocks me. It was the most <laughs> fascist, racist, segregationist thing I have ever been to in my life. Uh, and we were sitting, we were trying not to laugh. Did they recognize after, you? Did people see you there? No, nah, this was, you know, 2019. 2019. Okay. So, uh, yeah. And we were in back, and what the first fifteen minutes was getting their personal pronouns and yeah. Yeah. Dude, it was rushed it out of the way. It was so <laughs> fucking dumb. We have video of it. We'll we'll we'll, we'll dig it up somewhere. Yeah, one day. <laughs> it I is, mean, like, what was it? The attendance like? Was there a lot? Was it packed? It was, it was kind of packed. In it was kind of packed. Yeah, yeah. it's New York City, so this was before so, the pandemic. So, what, did everybody still have their masks on, or did, is that a post? Well, this, this was uh, the pandemic. We just started hearing about the pandemic at this time. I uh, remember Jeremy and I were talking mm -hmm. about it, you yeah. know, and because uh, mm -hmm. Jeremy was there too. Yep. I, um, I wasn't at this panel, but because, no. uh, yeah, cause where was I? Was I doing a video or something? You were, you didn't want to go to the con. You were like, I'll go to the con for one day. You weren't interested in going oh, to the yeah, con. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I don't yeah. like cons. Yeah. And that's another thing. I, I always get press passes for these. I'm like, I we just, me and Gary, remember that time me and you, we just hung out with the people, you know, we're like, we walked in there, you know, and then we just, you know, we're like, we just want to hang out with the people. 
Yeah. That's all I want to do. Yeah. So if you see me at LA Comic Con, you know, I'll shop, but like we can just go run around and uh, I can't do any formal meeting places because I, you know, it's too short notice. But yeah, it, it, but I think that same panel now would be empty. And, and I've been yeah. to similar panels that they did a diversity in comics panel at Comic Con that same year. And there was, 10 people in there but that's the famous one where the uh editor of lion forge which is now gone uh came out and said well if a japanese person uh came up to me with an african-american story it would be a hard pass and i'm and I'm like, what? right i forgot about that yeah I'm, i wish i would have gotten that on recording because that i'm like well there, there there we are that is the that is the racism racism mm -hmm. of the current identity politics uh and and that was in again in 2019 so it's it's big difference these panels still happen and jeremy's right i think he overestimates a little i think it's four people who go in there and it's <laughs> counting the panel itself i was talking about based on weight not not necessarily <laughs> <laughs> uh but um so four fat people, here i got the the total. actual official name of it oh, I have anime a story too they, they have the balls to do this stuff too yep. so yep. shout out to them Fighting fascism and fandom, aka we really do care, wow. colon, protecting fandom from bigotry. <laughs> wow. That was the name. <laughs> That's quite a name for a panel. Right like there. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, Reckoning Part, Part 1. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> or Hunger Games. Uh, Just like Song that, no Part 2 coming. What's the title of that video, right? The SJW's Nerd Cultural Appropriation Version 4, Garrett? Oh, yeah. That was my uh, my uh, little documentary I made that never got released. So. Oh, I think we can we release it? I don't think so, legally. Um, okay, what I about you? if I team? technically own it. What if I steal it from you and then I release well, it? Hey, man. That's okay. up to you. All right. <laughs> it's a pretty good little uh, documentary. I watched it Why like, last week. Why don't you give week. me the footage and then I'll say I stole it? I'll drop and, the footage on the ground, and then you can I'll just go, help hey, me pick it up. Wonderful footage. conversation to have in front of 16,000 people live. Hey, you, <laughs> you, got, you got your peanut butter, my chocolate. Hey, hey, you right. guys wouldn't rat us out. I trust every uh, No, absolutely. You, you can trust all 16,000 <laughs> people that are watching right now. Uh, I'm sure you're all friendlies out there. So. <laughs> <laughs> no selling, which is more crime. <laughs> Imagine, imagine thinking we have a secret fucking Discord where we talk. We're not retarded. We just say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. All right. Um, uh, let's let's get to. We'll do this briefly because most of the panel could give a shit. Ryan, oh, here we go. You can go wank. But <laughs> thank you. Uh, bring up, bring up. Uh, you're welcome, Ryan. Oh, is this the Doctor yeah. Who talk? I got the clip. You yeah. want to do the clip first? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Should hang out say. with my family. I'll see you. <laughs> Bye, Odin. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you know what? I just want to point out that I'm in Wisconsin visiting family in my brother-in-law's house. <laughs> Odin's the only one with family. The only one. Only one with babies, even though I saw a cute little baby yesterday. The children of men. <laughs> we can get X-ray girl. Hey, we got X-ray girl. She can get back up in here. Get back up in here, lady. Exuday. Exuday. I don't have the thing now. All right. So there's two clips we got to show. Did, did you get both of them? God, I tried to put. Uh, okay. I tried. Did, okay. There's. You got to play one before the other. So you got to play the meep one. And oh, then okay, yeah. Let me get the meat quick, one real quick. I have the other one. David Tennant comment talking about Donna's daughter. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Uh, never, never, I'm never watching it again. again. I'm never watching it again. No, Doctor Who um, came out and said that they can't make Davros, who's uh, half Dalek. He's he's on a life support system. He's half Dalek. If you've, you, I'm sure you guys have seen a Dalek, right? And yes. uh, they I know who he is. Yes. Yes. Well, so apparently now he's seen as a wheelchair user, so that would be associating anybody in a wheelchair with evil Holy to present God. him that way. So they had to change it. Okay, I saw that. That's such a retarded take, too. This is a retarded take because it. there's a new villain coming who's trans. Oh wow! <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Great it's job. It's about visibility, Gary. It's about visibility. Okay, so we're gonna meet uh, the Meep first. 
the meep. Oh! Uh, and this is a new character, by the way. Um, if you're familiar with Donna Noble. Donna Noble uh, had a husband, right? And also, she she won the lottery. Her family won the lottery thanks to the doctor. If you watched, um, you know, uh, uh, why am I blanking on the name? Has help end me. of time. End of time, part two. Jesus Christ, I'm getting old. <laughs> but, uh, the tent doctor gives Donna's family a lottery, a winning lottery ticket. So they should be set for life. Well, this is their daughter. No, it's a guy. Donna Noble's daughter. Baby Yoda looks weird in this one. Yeah. <laughs> White power. So I, hang on. Wow. Is that the transactor? <laughs> Yes. You, yeah. Just look at the hands. I'll give you the answer. Right and, there. Uh, yeah. I mean, th- I mean, she could pull a basketball. <laughs> <laughs> she could probably dunk a basketball. Dunk. <laughs> <laughs> this is Rose. Uh, but oh, God. They, okay, we're not going to play the whole thing, but we're going to get to the agenda portion of this clip, which is just around the corner. She's all of it. Oh, uh, uh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Already, this feels like something out of a, a kid's channel or something like that. I, I well, okay. That, that's interesting that you say that. It's something out of a kid's channel. Sorry, Chrissy, but like we were actually getting to the, could you go back a couple of seconds? Oh, sorry. It's okay. We're, I should have warned you. We were, we were getting to the point of, uh, a, it, it looks very much like the Sarah Jane Adventures. Any Doctor Who fans out there? Yeah. The more kid yeah. friendly. Yeah. 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 Very much. And this is the like Disney Jane. Plus series now oh, that has more yeah. budget it's disney's right? doctor who by the way folks disney's oh my doctor god that's right that about that. That. Not distribution they finance this and yes. they have creative say this is disney's doctor who please that's continue. holy crap so cute in it. Dude, do- disney is the nothing from never ending story just sucking everything <laughs> up yes <laughs> but i like i I actually didn't know Disney was financing this, and yes, my comment was genuine that this felt like something out of a kids' channel. Yep. And then it uh, is Disney. That's what they're doing. Oh, uh, like, uh, Shad, you have your kids sitting down watching this, and uh, here, let's uh, play it. Yeah, I know that feeling. You gotta rewind Sometimes a little more. I think I'm from a different. Uh, I wish I had that clip. <laughs> Whoa! I want oh. to die. I want to shoot that meat in want, the face. I want to die. Is- <laughs> <laughs> what a freaking boy. You should me. I appreciate oh that after that she God. stood up and adjusted her junk. <laughs> <laughs> the balls are sticking into my legs. Okay, so um, this was the, the first clip. Yesterday, Thanksgiving Day, was the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who, oh. and this is the first clip they released for the special. <laughs> That's released. That's going to be on Saturday. Oh, it's it's all right. I'll watch that. I hope you enjoy it, Gary. I, I, I wish I'll, I was fired for Friday Night Tice. So I wouldn't have to watch this <laughs> shit. <laughs> Holy fuck. I'm just going to watch season three. This you is fucking terrible. Me, Jeremy? <laughs> it's so okay, bad. So pull up the next clip. when I the, can't even fap later because of this fucking clip. All right. You I, fucked I, that I, up, I, too. I told you to fap before Dude. you saw the clip, bro. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, Ryan did, right? Him. He left before watching all that. So he's I feel good. like I'm watching uh, like a Mr. Rogers trans neighborhood or something. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, all right. What's annoying so, about that clip, right? The actual concept of an alien not understanding what a toy is and freaking out that you think you're murdering a toy when you pull the stuffing out, you could make that work and you could actually make it really damn funny. That was so lame and cringe, where it's like, oh, you pulled his stuffing tubby out. It's, it's like, oh no, no, what are you Alan doing? It's very it's and, then to an abattoir. and then Rose immediately <laughs> goes into like the message part. Well, I sometimes yeah. I feel like I'm uh, not of this world. Like, what? I'm just why. So uh, he's go like, up, we weren't talking about, about that. Thirty seconds. Why is it always about thing. you? Is it, I mean, oh, oh maybe, back, maybe maybe back a little more. We I mean, can your pole into a hole. <laughs> he's just basically <laughs> doing exposition, explaining Donna Noble, and she has the she absorbed the mind of a time lord. That's why she can never remember him anymore. Because if she does, she'll die. What? Daughter, <laughs> beautiful daughter. So they're really trying to uh, listen. If somebody's trans. On an individual basis, you're an adult. I have no problem with you. I'll I'll respect you. It's all good. Um, this is a kid show. That uh, young, uh, it's very young, by the way. 
Uh, how as you still there? I see I'm the on the floor. On the floor, dying. Florida. Nineteen Florida. years old, right? Uh, they were eighteen when they were cast, I believe. Eighteen oh. when they were cast. Yeah. So, um, other question: sure. Is the character, the in-world character, trans, or yeah. is the actual character? Yes. Or both. I, More oh. importantly, Shad. The family is now destitute, despite having given be given the doctor gave him a lottery ticket. They should have been set for life. The family is now destitute. Maybe it was because of all the surgery. Right, medical surgeries <laughs> are expensive, I, I guess. Oh, <laughs> it's okay when when he goes and plays in the WNBA. They'll maybe be making tons. Of <laughs> <laughs> the all star right there. Multiple hey, at the top of the game. But... They might if, have a certain if, height yeah. advantage. If they actually got paid anything, then maybe that would be true. <laughs> Still go to North Korea. <sighs> the WNBA is a NBA tax write-off, and it must uh, be really lucrative for them. The write-off part of it. Yes. Losses are mad. You could take down this clip. So Russell T. Davies is not only complete. It, it, okay. It will, for Star Wars fans, it would be like, hey, we have to change Darth Vader. Uh, he, we're going to take his mask off and he's going to have all his limbs because we don't want to offend anybody with prosthetics. That's the ex <laughs> same. Oh, Gary, what about the Daleks? Anyway, what about the Cybermen? W what's... Hello? Isn't every Dalek in a wheelchair? Cybermen are, are amputees. The Essentially, it's just a human brain that exists. Yes, That's adults all. are mutilated humans in wheelchairs. Uh, Cybermen are just brains in machines. Uh, but I was trying to give Top a reference to people who don't know Doctor Who. Uh, and yes, uh, RTD. You can't spell retard without RTD. Yeah. <laughs> and he's been going out and attacking fans. Fans who genuinely, like, even fans who are in wheelchairs are like, D I never saw myself as Davros. I never had a problem with this. I think you're crazy for changing it. And like, giving some really respectful criticism. And his response is, tough and tough. poor baby mm. fuck you dude seriously get fucked with He's, that nonsense broken 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 yeah broken, he knows broken. better than them that's the yeah, thing he, he knows yeah. better than them he like they're they're the ones who are oppressed and he's gonna help out he is the he is the white knight that's gonna lift them up and it's okay because they have dude. internalized ableism <laughs> that's so retarded yeah it's like peter dinklage with the freaking midgets yeah that's because Peter Dinklage just wants all the fucking jobs. That's the only reason why I did that shit. If, if Peter Dinklage can go a day being sober, that'd be uh, good. Hey. <laughs> you ever seen his race? Hey, dude, he Thrones? just had a, a little mm. shot. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you ever seen his red carpets for Game of Thrones, though? He is no. fucking hammered for every really? single one. In yeah. all fairness, yeah. most of them are. His Hunger Games so? character is also a drunk. The well, this is and this shocks me. <laughs> I'm shocked. Can, can you put the drink down, Peter? Let's fucking do with the drink. Let's do it. That's Peter. The only thing I really love. He just drinks little airline nips. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine the uh, the 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 you know minis in the fridge. They're like fucking huge bottles to him. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Jack holding a 12 ouncer with his face. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like... <laughs> it's economical. <laughs> yeah, I can't find the tweet now. I retweeted it. It's I forgot what it's from. I apologize. It's basically saying this show is fucked, and it's the two screen uh shots of uh. Russell T. Davies' response. Let me see. It's in Discord too. It's under new videos. Somewhere. Well, I'm looking for it. You can look at the. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 I think you should do the neck, Nick, furry. Well, what? <laughs> furry? Yeah, you were getting yeah, weird you were, there. You, you were, you were. Uh, I'm like searching for that. I'm gonna say thing. it. I'm gonna <laughs> say it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say oh, it about him, President. You got it? <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> Meowvels. That's, that's the plot of the film. A skinless kitty is going to say the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> well, more people Will he that. say it? I'd rather well, watch that. Oh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's got gone. the N-word bands and it's not Why the is word the we're talking about. 
Are you talking it's about this? It's a waxed one? cat. Yeah, I couldn't find it. Oh no, no! No, 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 no. The tweet is gone where the guy says your show is fucked and it's got the screenshots of uh, Russell T. Davies Did responding. You oh, you know what? We showed it on the BBC. Maybe I can find this clip. Maybe you can screenshot BBC. it. But in the meantime, this, yes. This, this no, clip makes, this just is makes worse. me worse. Okay. Just oh, makes me oh, fuck. Okay, so this is from a special, from the 50th anniversary special by Mark Gatiss. It's uh, an Adventures in Space <sighs> and Time, and it's the a biopic of William yeah, Hartnell. It's the, really good. Four and it's really good. The former first doctor, played by David Bradley, you might recognize him as Filch, Mr. Filch. Uh, yes, uh, he's also in Game of Thrones uh, and Hot Fuzz. And in Hot Fuzz, and he plays the great William Hartnell, and who's the first dinosaurs doctor. on a spaceship. Uh, at, yes, you're right. Where he's yeah. in Jack Harkness's uh, Captain Jack's old ship. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a two thir 2013 version. Um, and this is how much effort they put into uh, to it here playing. So here's the 2015 version. Great, great ending. This is, this is, this is emotional impact, by the way, is uh, he didn't want to leave Doctor Who. No. But he was having a lot of health problems, and mm. uh, it's very sad. Don't so remember his lines, stuff like that. Yeah. Aww. Yes. It's sad and that's, that was a lovely ending. It's a 2023 version. Ah, oh. what? Not being <laughs> shooting that one, the same fucking thing. Wait, wait, are you, oh, okay. are you kidding me? No. What? No, this is real. This is real. Is so real? Why? Why? Well, instead of making something new, David Bradley's still around, by the way. Okay, so Whoa. explain to me why is there a different version of this? Is it just a re release or what? Yeah, it's, because, it's because Shooty Gato is black and Matt Smith is white. <laughs> I, I like, just is there, is there have a, to say the truth, is, okay? Is there, a, yeah, is, there a, is there a reason like they redid this? Scene? Yeah, yeah, it, from It'd the be story funny if or it what? Put, like a it clan was, hood was, on it. <laughs> it was a lazy way of uh, putting out something on the 60th anniversary without having to produce uh, anything. And it was also because Matt Smith is white and Shudi Gakwa <laughs> is black. But as just said, that's the only reason they fucking did it. The BBC is fucking out of their minds. And then being, you know, supported by uh, Disney and the new series is going to be making it even fucking worse. I just, but Russell T. Day, it's going to be so fucking great to see your comeback <laughs> and see you fucking burn just, just see you come back and take every bit of goodwill, every fucking person that defended you, every fucking person that supported all your shit. Come back and see your fucking hubris. Your hubris set you on fire, mate. It you did. Were, and, and, it's so <laughs> funny because it's like, I don't know anything about what's going on, but I see Matt Smith and he's like, he looks all dressed up and proper and the way I imagine Doctor Who. And then it, it's like they literally are like hey netflix version of a dude who by the way, <laughs> not, by, by the way not just black, black but looks about as flaming as you could possibly be right? <laughs> well, yeah. up there. i know like, like there is so little doctor who kind of dna in his outfit at all like, like you would never look at this oh, i'm sure there's some dna somewhere outfit. there oh, <laughs> just, just yeah, by the outfit no, just by the outfit i mean a like, bunch of men's semen on him that's what i mean <laughs> <laughs> it looks like um, Shooty Gatwa's doctor's got multiple outfits for this. Multiple. Really? Yeah, and that's not. I mean, he's supposed to have a, a signature look. No identity. No identity. Know. Uh, none. Well, no, well, no, he'll have an identity as <laughs> it'll, be a, it'll be a political identity, though. Yes, there will be. Oh my god! But um, I need a drink. It's lazy. Yeah, it's it's lazy, and and honestly, it, you know, it doesn't do Shooty Got One any justice. They could have done a whole new special for him. They're like, hey, uh, 60th anniversary, dude. They the 50th anniversary was amazing. It was. Uh, it, it's hard to explain, you know, to to Ameri to Americans, but like this show is pretty fucking big in the UK. At one point, there was a David Tennant special, uh, Voyage of the Damned, where over 18 million people in a country of 66 million people watched the fucking show. That's Super Bowl. That's no, that's over Super Bowl percentages mm -hmm. in America. That's fucking huge. And uh, Comic-Con, while Game of Thrones was out, uh, uh, 
Doctor Who was the biggest thing at Comic Con. There was more people comic cosplaying. Yeah, that's true. There was toys. It was fucking dominated uh, during the 50th anniversary. And now they're copying pasting over fucking shit. And it's it's low effort. <laughs> they supposedly have more money. And they it, RTD has essentially come out and said, you know, all those other all, all you old Doctor Who fans. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. But aren't we impressed that they were able to get Tim Meadows to reprise his role as the ladies' man from Man? Uh, <laughs> I'm the ladies' man. Yeah. I get that, Chrissy. I love Tim Meadows. I have I no man. idea what you're saying. The so man's man. Go watch some skits on the ladies' man. They're actually legit for funny. Tim Meadows is great. I may have aged myself. Well, I, I just want to know. I just want to know. I just want to really, really, truly know. Why do you hate us so much? Yeah. Why? It it's it's bigotry. Why do why do you, why know, do you like, hate the people? RTD, that RTD's had a lot of passes, but man, remember this guy said gr- gay people are more creative. Wow. In bed, maybe in bed. <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 they're more talented <laughs> and more creative. Well, okay. that's, when, you got, when you got when you got two squares instead of a. Oh, okay, a, a like never the, mind. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah, Lady Graymaster gave it to me. Oh, I missed it. All the people who for decades have kept these franchises alive, kept these franchises going, all the people who in the dark times when it got con- when it got cancelled wouldn't give up, all the people who even when the US took over the, the license and it failed still didn't give up, all the people that, that carried on going, kept the Doctor alive, kept the support alive, that allowed Russell T. Davis to, to come in and get a shot at bringing it back, and when he did, it got supported so heavily... All those people, go fuck off. Yeah. It's disappointing, but this way, I mean, remember, this is also the guy who said straight people can't play gay characters anymore. (laughs) Yes, we can. But trans people can, never mind. We're getting stronger. (laughs) Well, especially, you know, yeah. Especially Ryan. Ryan's the gayest. You know, know, know. gay guys can play straight characters. Just look at Tom Cruise. Yep. Uh, 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 yeah. Okay, that was a little weak there, quarter black. Okay. <laughs> but <that's> okay. Right. <laughs> okay. You should have said, I mean, "Look at Chris Evans, a gay man playing Captain America." I mean, if that's, gay people can play straight obvious. characters, then <laughs> then the the other should be the case. Yeah, goes both ways. It does. Leave Tom Cruise alone. He's crazy as fuck, and we love him. Okay. <laughs> he's a national treasure, and he's I didn't crazy. say I didn't like him. He'll beat your ass, me, and Carmen. then make a great fucking movie, and you'd be like, hell yeah! I don't give a shit. How did his movie with Mecca Dorama do? How did that one do? How did I'm a male cuckold do? How did that one do? Hmm? Any good? No. Nobody. Nobody knows it. What was it even called? What? Hmm. What was talking about Will Smith there for a second? I didn't know who you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the guy we've been talking about, Chris Evans. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Oh. The table? oh, that was Will Smith. Sorry. Yeah, absolute yeah. irrelevancy, Chris Evans. Irrelevancy. Oh, the, the gray man? It, no, I no. Well, that movie was one, trash. I might have been. I, it was the one where the he gay was man. a normal <laughs> dude and he was dating a. He was dating Anna Dare Moss, who yeah. happened to be like, oh, a, yeah, he's like a damsel. He's like ghosted, right? Is that it? Ghosted. Yeah, ghosted. yeah, yeah. Ghosted. It. yeah. So that's what happened to the box office. Yeah, <laughs> hey, it, it's, it's fucking rough. It's rough when that happens. Here is uh, Davros isn't a wheelchair user, he's partially mutilated. Uh, I can't, oh my God. Khaled. Hey, Khaled. I can't read. Somebody needs to read this. It's too small. Davros isn't a wheelchair user. He's a partially okay. mutated Khaled in a life support system, halfway between Khaled and Dalek. Like I was perfectly fine seeing Davros pre-accident, <laughs> I think a lot of fans have wanted to see this for some time, but to insist that this is for, inverted commas, better representation of disabled people is just utterly bizarre. If we're now going to pretend, as you suggest, Davros was never in the chair or he just got better, well, that undermines one of the greatest villains who ever cre- who was ever created. And Russell T. Davis responds with, tough. Oh, <laughs> wow. Uh, will you be... Sorry, can you read this oh, now? You go on, you go on, you okay. go on. Will you be changing the Cybermen next so it doesn't upset our friends with prosthetic limbs? <laughs> Russell T. Davis, oh, poor baby crying emoji. Oh, wow, oh, wow. he's salty. 
Yeah, yeah. just a tad. And, just, and of course, he has um, no argument to say. All he can do is mock because, of course, the logic that they're proposing is completely solid. Like they're a hypocrite and they're inconsistent with their standards. And of course, the base reasons why they're doing it is retarded. And so all he can say is, poor baby. And he's got it's nothing. Yes. It is. I'll ruin your mythos that's, in a minute, baby. That's, that's, what's, oh, you know, that's what's called toxic fandom. That is legit criticism. No, no name, call, nothing. It was like, yeah. hey, I love this thing. Why are you doing this? And the guy's like, fuck that's you. Solid argument. Yeah. Um, and, and then compare that to, and contrast it to Amon Villani's response about Captain Marvel bombing. And she's like, hey, it's out of my hands. Sorry. You know, uh, it's Bob Iger's yeah. problem. We did the best movie we could. It was a perfect response. Classy. Probably, yep. and, Honestly, and, most Hollywood actors, if they weren't just so retarded to just fall for the media's bullshit questions and just true. be able to answer them much better, it would improve so much. But they all walk right into the media trap when the media sets them. Like, again, Henry Cavill's response when that dumb reporter asked him about and he beautifully just crushed it you know what i mean and, and if he would have answered that the way that the reporter wanted him to answer it think of all the the fans that would have responded negatively but he answered it the right way he didn't get baited into their bullshit but most of them can't can't just understand that the media is trying to manipulate them and they walk right into it every time they walk well, right into these it. These actors have a sort of public, you know, political persona out there that they have to uphold, whether it's TDS or something else, it's, they're going to be less inclined to give a response like, well, I did the best I could. It was out of my yep. hands. That's true. Yeah. That is I true. Cause most of them, yeah. Cause most of them do want to just get on their soapbox and start talking about their activist messages. Go ahead. I think uh, a large Ashford. part of it is that they're super narcissistic. And if, it's never their fault. It has to be someone else's fault. So if it's not their fault, yep. who is the next person they can blame? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, and to kind of for the, for the, we even have like different kind of standards too for some of these people. Take uh, fucking Adam Driver. Did you guys see Adam Driver's response when somebody was talking about his movie Ferrari the other day? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Adam, somebody got up and asked a question. They were basically like, Hey, I thought a lot of the chase sequences and everything, I thought it was just really cheesy and looked fucking terrible. Like, he didn't say fucking, but looked terrible. <laughs> what do you have to say about that? And he was like, fuck you. And he like, get a drink of water. Right? Yeah, if, yeah. If other people had said that, oh my God, dude, it would have been the fucking end of the world. Yeah. Like, uh, right. you, you know what I mean? But it just kind of depends on the circumstance, depends on the question, depends on the person and their history and how we kind of interpret it does but I'm, yeah yeah and and but adam driver is a classic example of like uh, he's obviously a prominent part of the disney star wars trilogy that everybody hates um the cringiness with the Raylos and all of that he's intertwined in that his character is anyway but people are able to separate the person from the the character that we all hated uh because so of how he that that sorry to interrupt you real no, quick. Just want to point out the Raylos that did uh, personally attack him. Yes, absolutely. And, yep. and tried to get, like at his home. And shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 His marriage. Mm -hmm. shit. His wife. Want to point yeah. out Raylos are weird. Uh, Raylos are yeah. weird. Hey, hey, I think Ray, they're you were mentally say ill. ill. <laughs> they absolutely are. Which they is are. a little bit like weird, but you're mentally fucking ill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, what I was going to say was, I think in a situation like that, where you have somebody who is so toxic to the people who love the IP, all it is, they have, they have great branding. The, the branding being toxic fandom. And all tox, or a, a toxic fandom is just things that they don't like to hear. And mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just, a, just a great branding. Toxic fandom that they can just throw everything underneath. And uh, that's, you know, you, you can't say... Well, that's a, you're, you're a toxic showrunner or you're a toxic producer. You know, you can't, I mean, you could say that, but it's not going to be as uh, as catchy as a big old catch all as just toxic fandom. It's just, I didn't like that. So now you're toxic to me. Yes. And it is branding. You're absolutely right, Craig. It's branding that came, that was, uh, that the access media and marketing departments in Hollywood came up with to brand mm -hmm. their paying customers. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. And anybody who's been part of this shit for any significant amount of time knows that that is absolute bullshit. Anybody that grew up in gaming, anybody that grew up in sports, my God, sports fandoms, fucking the, tr the shit talking that takes place is uh, it's unbelievable. It has not changed. It has not changed <laughs> at all. Gaming, they've tried their best to dial that shit back. I'm sorry, it ain't working. We talk so much shit, it ain't even... Oh my gosh. But yeah, to imagine telling people that grew up in that gaming era that you're a toxic fandom because you criticize the Star Wars movies. Get the fuck out of here, man. Nobody, nobody that's actually been part of fandom believes that. Uh, Gary, now I don't know if he's ever said this publicly, and this might be breaking news, once owned a comic shop, okay? I, I, I'm putting it out there. I'm just putting it out there. But if you've ever been in a comic book store or a gaming store, retro toy story, toy, uh, toy story, a uh, toy store, the conversations that are just happening organically over the dumbest shit imaginable is part of fandom. I was in a retro store one time and there was a wrestling, they had wrestling on uh, in, in the, the top corner, like an old school WCW match. There was this big argument going on about like who was the better wrestler in the WCW Nitro era. And I'm like, they were arguing, they, they were passionate. And I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. Why can't we? They were just talking shit, calling each other names. That's what it's all about. That's mm -hmm. what it is. It's just a quintessential, uh, like the phrase just has a uh, manipulative woman kind of written all over it. it it's yeah. like you're trying to neuter the male fan base by, by calling normal behaviors, normal criticisms, uh, normal analysis toxic to just shut them up and bully you. Yeah, it's passion, it's using toxic. The the uh, yeah, criticisms that they're experiencing. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So there's something really play. interesting with this character that I find fascinating, which is that he genuinely really does just want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. But everywhere he goes, whether this it's guy holds his, bar, his boyfriend's <laughs> hand <laughs> as his boyfriend's on, getting pummeled by another boyfriend. I'm curious if that's comparable to this, on the Fresh Prince world, of this culture of toxic <laughs> fandom, where like, <laughs> if you make a movie, especially if you make a superhero movie, like you have great intentions, but there are always going to be a small yet vocal group of people there can kind of just be toxic. I understand what you're saying, but when it comes to fans, it is a fan's right mm -hmm. to have whatever opinion they want to have. And people are going to be upset because especially when it, you're talking about books or games, because you're never going to be the exact person who they had in their head or who they played on Witcher 3, for example. Yeah, I so. don't necessarily consider that toxic. I just consider that passionate. Mm. Boom. Thank you. <laughs> Boom. It's it's the most perfect answer you could imagine right there. Perfect. Warhammer. At all. No. Yeah. And that's that's the thing is they take it. Uh, so those conversations that were happening uh, when I worked at the warehouse uh, in the video department, uh, when I worked at my comic shop, it's exactly what we're doing here. They're the exact same tone. Nobody held back. And I'm talking about in very liberal, progressive San Francisco, right next to San Francisco State. I was within a mile of San Francisco State, and we had the same fucking conversations we're having here. Got along just fine. No fucking problem. It got a little salty, especially during when One More Day came out. There was a lot of yelling for that one. But, uh, yeah, it's it's this is the way fandom's been. Uh, what changed was corporatism. And 2016, you know, we were me and Chris were asked this question on the Nooner last week. And, you know, it's they, they were like, what was the point where things just got broken? And it's undeniably Donald Trump. Whether yes. you like it or not, that's what happened. Yes, yep. He broke Hollywood. He broke, Hollywood. he broke everybody. He broke the world, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> and COVID, you know, after that. Yeah. It was COVID after that. And that certainly was an equal to what uh, uh, Donald Trump and their reaction to it. But uh, yeah, it went on for a long time. And I said this, I said it at the time, the woke shit was dying in 2019. Jeremy and I had a conversation about it. We had a conversation about it on the street uh, right after, you know, after the Joker mm -hmm. and uh, uh, in Times Square. Uh, but what gave it extra time was the summer of love, mm -hmm. COVID. It, re it just gave it a little extra life. But the problem is when you give something that's dying extra life, it has worse consequences when it dies. And here we are. And it's not we, we, we hyper focus on Disney, but Disney kind of represents Hollywood right now. And all of Hollywood is suffering and and will continue to suffer. And that that it started to be questioned again openly like, oh, shit. OK, now that the strike is over, it's like it's like waking up from a massive hangover and going, oh, shit. 
uh, am I going to get me? What did we do? Uh, you know, like uh, that's 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 what they're dealing with right now. And they you you don't alienate half the country over and over again for years and expect them to fucking come back. They're not going to come back. They're never going to come back. You're never going to be what you once were. Doctor Who is never going to be what it once was. Star Wars is never going to be. These things are gone. Yep. Gone. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, maybe it's good at this point. You know, it, it th- we'll still love this shit. Like Ryan's still going to love EU books, right? If you haven't read them all, he's going to find eventually he'll get around to reading them all. You know, uh, Doctor Who, uh, I talked about it earlier on my square up today. Uh, I've seen every episode that's out there, but I've never seen them in order, you know, because I'm from America. I never got to see them in order and not never got to see them as they aired. Uh, I'm going to do that someday. You know, uh, I, I, I'll always love this shit. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's when Hollywood's done with it and pulverized it. The nerds, we're, we're still going to be here. We're still going to fucking be here. And, and maybe it goes back into uh, the niches. And that's good. Yes. Yeah. Well, the one Where thing we want it to be with the discussion of all these the franchises is that it tr- gives us the opportunity to discover something new that we haven't seen before. I've started reading the Conan books and they are fucking phenomenal. So so good, Howard is dude. Great. Fucking Crumb, love this work. Crumb's also good. Yeah. Yeah. So I've, I've gone to half price books and I've started just buying, just going to the sci fi section and just buying random sci fi books. And they're mm-hmm. so cheap. And started reading. They're like a dollar. Go book. read them. Yeah. You, you can. They're, uh, if there's CGI want to up here, then EU, on Ryan, do you know off the top of your head how many EU books are there? Got a good uh, around 140 ish, 140 plus, somewhere on there. And you it, can get that's just, like, that's just like adult novels, not counting all the junior books yeah. and everything. Yep. I love so, adult novels. Mm-hmm. You can go to any half price books and get, get them for any a couple EU bucks. book for, yeah, $2. Well, well $99. If they got them there, yeah. <laughs> if they got, if they have them. I but mean, then that's, part, that's part of the fun. Like, go, we'll go back to the, we'll circle back to the physical media thing. <laughs> go out and try and find these things. Jeremy's talked about it before about collecting. Uh, it, the fun of a lot of that is the finding, going the to the hunt, stores, hunt for the yeah, hunt, man. I hunted. I hunted. The thrill, the thrill I hunted. of the hunt. The thrill of the hunt. You go, you go find those books and go, all right, I've got two, four, and six. Like, how do I, I gotta... hunted, Rob. I hunted for Toby Maguire's dick. Hunted. <laughs> It is true, though. I mean, again, it's like it's weird to me that I have access weird, to any GI Joe that I want, like on Amazon or eat, but I don't like buying stuff off of there. I like to go to retro stores and and find yeah, it. You know, like the the other day, Gary, Gary, you're muted, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you were, you were when you were talking. Um, like, but uh, the other day, Gary sent me a a picture of the USS flag. Uh, it was at a, a get your retro shop you were at, right? I was like, oh, man, because I've seen it a few times. It's just so expensive, man. One day I'm going to pull the trigger on it. Oh, it's ridiculous. Uh, and Jeremy, they, they were missing. The the only thing that was missing is the clips to put it together. And, and they told me how much each one of those clips cost. It's $25 per. Yeah. What a and, clip. You know, and, yeah. So oh. I, asked them, I asked them, I'm like, can you, can you make them? And they're like, yes, you can 3D print them. There is instructions to do that. Uh, but it's huge, and I'm like, oh, it's the my biggest God. toy. I think it's the biggest toy. I mean, st- it was ever at the made? time, but I think it's the biggest toy ever. I can made. see Haslabs yeah, so. doing it. I could see Haslabs yeah. doing, doing like it. a modern. I get it. Yeah. I would get it. I would yeah. so get it. Yeah, I'm going back there if tomorrow my morning. Are just about to shit. My Cobra hisses yeah. are just about to shit. Uh, th- there might be people that, that don't know what we're talking about. So let me it's, show everybody. Sure. That I, I had a friend who had the flag, and that thing was gigantic. They made better toys back in the day, bro. They just oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. No, man, this is a let me sign a really good picture of it. But yeah, the USS flag, G.I. Joe. Oh, that's a pretty good picture right there. Let me uh, open in tab All right, right here. Check this out right. Here. I don't think I'd ever seen one, Jeremy, ever. Look at that. You. Yeah. Yep. That is yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's legit. Yeah. 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 Huge. Hell oh, look at that yeah. Blackbird, man. The fucking yeah. opening that on Christmas Jeez. morning. Whew. Dude, I, I, I've never, never I've well. never, yeah, I never, I've never, I mean, I've seen them in retro stores. I've never wow. actually seen someone that owned one. Um, but, Fucking hell. Yeah. So wait, Gary, how much was it going for? Uh, 1200 bucks. 1200 bucks. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. I might pull the trigger. Yeah. 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 Well, they also had the Wonder Bread He-Man there, uh, complete, yeah. which is fucking rare. Mm. Really rare. Uh, I, no, your, I say double as your kitchen table as well. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> legit, put a legit, piece of glass legit, on that. That is a it's small coffee pile. table. It's crazy. Yeah, it's coffee it's table. Legit, one of the best toy stores I've ever seen. It's Freak <laughs> Toys in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Sheboygan. Sheboygan. Yes. Sheboygan. All right, we're gonna get some scoops. Uh, really good show today, guys. Well done. It's been a good show. Well mm-hmm. done, Thanks, Gary. Agreed. I was hoping you'd say that. Thanks, I feel really, it'd, it'd feel really bad if you guys are like, this show sucks. I'd be like, huh? <laughs> it's all great. It's all. <laughs> we never see that show. We just face, wait, right? wait, wait, we wait for you to leave if we're going to. Yeah, okay. yeah. we're, we're, we're really devious like that. We, we tend to only have our private conversations privately. We don't say anything dumb. We, we're we really worried about our public image around here. <laughs> keep a tight ship around here. We're really we Ryan. Keep it on the uh, secret <laughs> Discord. That's right. That's right. Secret <laughs> Discord. Uh, Richard Vigorelli on the Streamlab side for $50. <laughs> I got the night off thanks to the holidays, so I get to watch you guys live. Oh, that's good. Uh, my second novel, Stonecutter. Will be out at the end of the winter. At, at the end of winter, unlike the next Game of Thrones. Oh shit! <laughs> hey. mm-hmm. uh, uh, hail to the Fellowship, the Silverback, and the One Nine Nine, and the Iron Age. Hail to you! Oh. Hail, um, dude. I, 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 I. The the last holdouts for George R. R. Martin and the Song of Ice and Fire are starting to lose hope, uh, and it took long enough. You're not getting wins of winter. We're not getting Dream of Spring. And it's it. That's it. It's done. He's going to work on TV shows until he dies. That's that's. And then maybe somebody finishes the book, but he's always said somebody won't. It's been 40. I haven't checked today, but it's 4,516 or 17 days since the release of a dance with dragons. And he has written exactly nothing. As a matter of fact, he's edited out 100 pages. Yeah. So December of last year, he was on a show and he said that he had, 11 or 1200 manuscript pages written with about another four or 500 to go. And he also, a few months before that said he was about 75% done. So all that tracks, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Now manuscript pages isn't the same as like pages in a book necessarily mm-hmm. just for the record. But, um, and then at a convention in Portugal or something, he was doing like a video interview and he got asked how far along he was. He's like, Oh, about 1100 pages. And I've got a lot more to go. It's like, so you'd made no progress in a fucking year. Now, I guess you could have written a little, taken out a little, edited, like, whatever, but you essentially made no fucking progress on this book that people were waiting 12 years for. That's the same interview where he revealed that not only is he working on House of the Dragon and the Dunkin' Egg, but also eight other spinoffs. I don't know if those are included in that eight other or not, but now I'm sure a lot of those are like, oh, some little story treatment that happened two years ago that's still on the table, but... It's frustrating for people that want to see the book finished. For sure. I just want to add that there was a writer strike where he couldn't work on anything television wise for six months. Could have gotten a lot of fucking writing done on Wins of Winter. You but would he- think. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I like the reality is I just don't think he knows how to finish it. You know? Well, he doesn't. I, I just don't think he knows. I, I think he has an idea of where he wants it to go, but he's always kind of talked about his writing style and how it's more like gardening and he like lets things grow as they go and things evolve but i think when you get now the garden's fucking overgrown Mm. and you can't cut out all these things to get to the end of your story and i just don't think he knows what to do i don't think he has the desire to do it either i think it's just desire i think it's more just like it's obligatory and he probably fucking hates it at this point oh well backlash to the final season of game of thrones put so much pressure on this ending as well because since people hated that so much and they know there's a skeleton likely of what George is going to do, but it's probably going to be much different than like the actual ending he intended. I feel like now it's like, there's so much pressure to deliver because people like it's going to be better when he does it. (laughs) And so I just think all that combined, it's like, fuck it. Just get fat, get COVID and die. (laughs) Like, I think that's his plan. Not, not saying I want that to happen. I just think that's what he's planning. Oh, Oh, well, I can't wait for House of the Dragon. I, I'm legit looking yeah. forward to that. It's uh, true. Uh, the, the, the trailer is done. It's screened for the press. Don't know when we're going to get it, but hopefully it's soon. Bring it on. Bring it on. If uh, you guys oh, are curious if Ryan is like that, like off the Internet, I got some bad news for you. He's worse. So <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> He's much worse. He doesn't have to be censored off the Internet. So, use this yeah. an F word in there if he wanted to say it to me. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, the, the Ryan is Ryan. You get what you get. That's right. It's true. You get <laughs> what you, get. you fucking deserve. Uh, Tomok for $50. Tomok. Master Gamer Gary. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Uh, even though as sure, we'll Jen. next month, but we will be doing uh, a Moria playthrough, Witcher 3. I'm going to do a lot of gaming next month, which means like three or four days. A couple hours each. <laughs> Maybe one. Game for me. Maybe one Not three. an as level of <laughs> 30 minutes. I'm not going to play. Dude, I, I am not going to sit there and play a video game for six hours, bro. This I got, you know what? I got some plans for some gaming with Gary, and I'm going to talk to him about it. So, Chad, I'm going to need you to help me. Uh, convince him because uh we got some i got some ideas got some ideas right. well i'm willing to negotiate yeah you watch a couple of tv shows i'll play some games all right so i've been here for three fucking years i was only supposed to be here for one episode fuck you <laughs> <Whatever. laughs> <laughs> about the future <laughs> That Doctor Who clip has earned me about 25 <laughs> hours of gaming already. <laughs> hey, hey, Ryan watched an episode. I owe, I owe him big time. <laughs> right. Um, Master Gamer Gary, do you think the tactics used by the Rentier Foundation would be significant for combating the sanguine forces of the vampires and e uh, and evil west yes tomok knows his shit all right tomok yes, yes tomok i completely agree with you uh, thank you for 50 dollars okay. uh, <laughs> tomok is still very upset that sunset riders didn't get more love on our retro stream craig mm, um, yeah it's rough sorry about that great game though hey it's we're gonna do a square up the next square up we do x-ray girl is gonna play uh alex jones and nwo hey i'm gonna learn some hey, uh multiple are channels are getting yes hey, multiple people are getting there those videos taken down just yeah horny, horny off got hit um mm -hmm. yes. well, we'll see Maybe if well, no, they, got, they got project egg roll right yeah, they got Project Egg oh, the, the Asian Shield doesn't work. Nope. Yeah. nope. Guess I'm next. I will <laughs> them with medical misinformation. Yep. Yeah, say you're trans, uh, yeah. and that might help. Okay. Find a gay black person to jump on your stream. Quarter black. Hey, quarter hey, he's gay. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, put yeah, the yeah, pony. Yeah, hey, do you still have the yeah, ponytail? Yeah, I'm growing it out. I'm growing okay, it yeah, out. just go oh, with the right. ponytail. It yeah. <laughs> it's even gayer when the hair's short, so it's like little stubby. <laughs> quarter black, 100% gay. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. $100. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for my Disney oh casting my call. <laughs> it's the same skin tone and everything. Yeah. yeah. I'm a few <laughs> minutes behind. That's what she said. Uh, behind the live, uh, but hope everyone had a great holiday. You know what? Yeah. I did. Did you guys have a good Thanksgiving? I had an excellent Thanksgiving. I did. Mine was excellent. Yeah. I, I ate too much. Thanksgiving I in October. You ate too much. Oh, and that's a good Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Fucking Wagner's man, on Thanksgiving, right? They they made burgers and brats for lunch. Uh huh. Four hours later, there's a full fucking turkey and everything. <laughs> what the hell? Good God! <laughs> I don't need to eat for a month. E one three three seven Neo for fifty dollars. Elite Neo, Elite Neo, Elite oh. Neo. So E1337. That's sleep. No, it's, it's E. Hold on. No, it's oh, E1337. It I just realized that. <laughs> oh, Bless my God. Neo, I am so <laughs> sorry. This is why you should only super chat me. Yeah. Hey, I fucking said it first. Fuck Neo, you, I ass. You. I got you. Right. That was hacker Neo base, knows. guys. Neo knows. He yeah. knows me, too. He always super chats me. He knows, he knows me I too. To he <laughs> knows I don't even have to say. He knows. Now we're fighting but over the super chat. The best gamer is. So thank you, Neil. I give me the super I'm chat sorry. and give it to me raw. Uh, hey, LFT crew. <laughs> Glad to see Craig has finally joined you all celebrating Thanksgiving belatedly due to some friends' travel mishaps. Oh, no. That's well, hey, Thanksgiving Friday Night Tights. There you go. Due to some really? friends. Uh, and, but better late than never. I agree. Feels like you are all here at the table with us as we feast. So it worked out after all. Oh, cheers, man. Late-giving. Late Just like this. 
Ryan yeah. looks extremely gay and happy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Way too happy. Yeah. Jeremy, Jeremy, you look like you're enjoying whatever happens happening to you. As looks like he's gonna enjoy whatever's behind me, like he's my ass. Right. And, uh... <laughs> I'm gonna eat yeah, the chip to... what's out of you. <laughs> Chad's just confused. I am. I don't understand this. I'm just waiting Where to do get breath. That's all I'm waiting for. That's <laughs> Yeah, she had that look has beautiful hair. That's true. They're, they're a nice pair, you know? Like, there you go. If you're going to have them, you might as well look at them. Quelndar on the Streamlab side for $50. Just hail the fellowship. Hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Gary, at one point, you mentioned a San Antonio gathering watching Lord of the Rings. Is it still a plan or is it just the Return of the King anniversary stream? I got to see when I get home because. Uh, it might be have to, it might have to be a little later like in january or something because uh, i'm uh this month i'm going to los angeles coming home no i'm here go to los angeles come home for a week and then i'm going to orlando <laughs> so uh no oh jeremy probably didn't know that but yeah that's that's the plan yeah, um I, I i yeah i knew okay good my, my wife well, i knew it was happening no I'm, i knew it was happening at some point i didn't have a specific yet so it's all good uh, yeah, a couple weeks. I'm gonna yep. be down in a couple weeks. Uh, Crit Nature on the Streamlabs side has just dropped two hundred and twenty-six dollars and seventy-eight cents. Damn. Damn! And says nothing. Just dropped it and said, "Fuck you." Moonwalk right out. <laughs> Moonwalk right out. What a Chad! What a Chad! Cheers, Magnus Norse for fifty dollars. So Magnum Norse. Did I say that? Jesus. Thank you. Magnum, Magnum Norse. Gary just doesn't care anymore. <laughs> okay, read well, well. the first two letters and then move on. That's it's what just I all about the money. I, just yeah, well, yeah, look, he, 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 Gary's the Disney of gamers. Like <laughs> he gets more views than all of us, and he's never done anything to earn this shit. He just, <laughs> you know, like it's bullshit. Like he can't even turn a fucking Wait. computer on, and yet he, he if he went live to play any game, he he get ten times the viewers as all of us. I try. Playing games. Disney does not try. I am really <laughs> incompetent. Okay. So as, as, it's called don't this tell me one, never me. <laughs> as, yeah, do not carry. confuse my illiteracy with not caring. Okay. Please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, sure, Jen. <laughs> He's got green blindness. Magnum okay? Norse, my apologies. You see, I'm apologizing. So it seems that these ESG companies are like drug addicts at this point. This is a very good uh, analogy. I like that. It is. They know uh, it's bad for them, but they do it anyway in order to receive a dopamine pat on the back from Larry Fink and Pfizer. Pfizer. Uh, this way, BlackRock can buy them for pennies. Hmm. Mm. Nelson, everybody wants Nelson Peltz to come in and be the savior. You know, it's like a, it, it's very much like politicians when they will submit a bill or something that they know isn't going to be successful or go through, but they get sort of like, uh, I don't know, WEF points or whatever. They get um, woke, like woke social credit. Yeah, yeah, like social, social credit. credit for, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Gavin Newsom did that before gay marriage was legalized in uh california like he made it legal you in san francisco sex with, with dudes or what uh what was that you had sex with dudes or what yeah uh, <laughs> well, yeah okay. sure sure yeah. have you seen his wife she can describe harvey weinstein's penis she's done oh. it in court um not was he married to jennifer lawrence yes okay <laughs> uh no uh no uh, so by the way he, congratulations on harvey and jennifer's child by the way i saw she was pregnant so anyway is she Oh, so this woman this was like pregnant. a couple years ago. Yeah. <laughs> what I was talking about is like they they earn, to earn their little woke points. So before gay marriage was legalized, uh, Gavin Newsom made it legal within city of San Francisco, and then started like they started performing marriages, knowing they would all get stricken down. Wow. Afterwards, so uh, it was just to make him look at that's the kind of guy he is. Was it stricken? <laughs> I, Go ahead, you know, I would, I would get the channel <laughs> terminated. Did you hear the beginning of the show? Did you hear yesterday, last week's show? Well, <laughs> oh, completely unrelated to the strickening of what you've just spoken about. 
And just speaking about stricken in general, you think they were struck down with? <laughs> uh, the state of California would not have cared. They would not have cared. Yeah, we have we have a, a represent we they. God, I can say that now because I'm not in California anymore. They Texas have now. a representative Wiener. The last name is Wiener. He, he's been trying to lower the age of consent. He's the guy who tried to push through the bill. I think it did get pushed through that you don't have to uh, devol- d- to tell your lover that you have AIDS. AIDS. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, don't, yeah. I, I, don't think, I don't think that's the law. I think the law basically changed HIV and AIDS to the same level of punishment that you would get for not disclosing any STD that you're aware of. You have to find out the old fashioned way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 I just don't disclose that I'm shit in bed. But he's also a yeah. uh, wiener's a big time... Uh, Playground activist. Yes, uh, and the playground. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, I thought it was a pedo. Yes, that too. Uh, Retro Meister for fifty dollars. Hail FNT and happy late Thanksgiving. Before drama with Sc- oh Scream Seven, uh, the series died in two thousand twenty-two by retconning the main story and killing off David Arquette's iconic character Dewey. Which Spoiler. I, uh, Sorry, I believe disrespects Scream fans and Wes Craven's legacy in that order. Yeah, I could, you know what? Scream's okay. I, I was never big into it, but uh, the fact that they cried. Yes, I like the first one, man. Yeah. First one's fine, My wife and I are in the middle of watching the entire series. We just watched the third one. Some actress got Not fired good. for saying something, you know, about the, the conflict over it, which she probably doesn't know anything about and, you know, whatever. Shouldn't have been fired. Gina Carano shouldn't have been fired. Yeah, yeah, that was my whole thing. Like, yeah. I, I, I disagree with ninety five percent of what people in Hollywood think about any like political topic offhand. Um, I don't, I don't think they should get fired for just oh. for just for that. Now, now, if you are advocating violence, that's a different story, right? Yes. Yeah, we could all we could all understand like why that might be something. Why that might be a different story, but. Um, if it's just your opinion and your opinion about maybe one what one group is doing to the other, even if I vehemently disagree with you, I don't think you should be fired. Nope. Especially nope. when everybody's fucking spouting all this shit off right now. It's you really should be cool. fired for the products that you make, not the things you say. What? Yeah. Shocking. Mm-hmm. Like Jonathan Majors should be fired for being a shitty king. He made fun of himself within the series. Yeah, That's he the did. funny part. If yeah. you watch the end, he did, he makes fun of himself. And like, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hey, hey, remember Loki, everybody? Remember? No, remember? no I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know already. The most Thank incredible. God, the did most you guys incredible love it? In my memory. You guys love the Loki, like this, uh, his uh, hair flip he would do every time he would time slip. He'd be like, God dang, that got old. Yeah, well, he's screaming like his giving himself whiplash. Yep. Maybe he was trying to flash dance. Maybe, maybe. flash dance was better though. Uh, Lelouch lives for fifty dollars. It was awesome to meet you and Exude Agu at the Wisconsin meetup. Great meeting you too, Gary. As promised, your portrait artwork is now sitting next to Captain Mal Reynolds of Firefly to my gallery wall, dude. Nice. This guy showed me a. That was good a, art. A sketch that needed of me and it was it was like not that i'm amazing like the art was amazing okay uh he got my oldness great you know this old haggard former meth head face great but it was like really well done he's a great artist so thank you for showing me that that was cool and he had me sign it and stuff it was really cool uh, go, go, great people the fellowship is awesome awesome people it's it's so much fun to do these things uh and i try to do the meetups as much as possible Thanks for all of your content and hail to the crew on FNT. Hail FNT. Thank you. Yeah. Misanthrope. For <laughs> Finny. Misanthropic one. Is Regarding that who it is? Media thing. I just did a video on how you can convert your Blu-rays and DVDs to local streaming services so you don't have to hassle with discs and use an AI you're familiar or UI that you're familiar with. Super handy. Yeah, I like having the discs though. For one, you can get cases and discs for cheap. Mm-hmm. You get a burner for pretty fucking cheap. 
the software is mostly free. I, I told you, um, Nero. Remember Nero, guys? Yeah, yeah. Nero burning ROM. I used the shit out of that like mm-hmm. 20 fucking years ago. Technicolor, we were using an unlicensed <laughs> Nero right. to make Blu-rays. I'm not fucking kidding. Mm-hmm. And they me, the first thing they tell you when you get there, don't update it. <laughs> wow, that's so funny. It's I just so love the fact funny. that the icon for the application was basically the Coliseum on fire. <laughs> it is, but the thing is, it was the best program. It so, was. It was and fantastic. it was free, so Technicolor used it. And we're, I'm like, you are fucking kidding me. We're using Nero, <laughs> That's which is great, you know? Um, Bro, when I when I was in like right that era in middle school, high school, you were a fucking king if you had a fucking CD burner and Nero and everything, and yep. you know what the fuck you were doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hell yeah! Oh, you, but like, you, okay, I'll I'll just come out and admit it. I, I would I would have loved to have had one piece on. I would buy one piece on on 4K like in a second, but they're not going to make one, so I I'll make, make that one. happen, Gary. All right, I can make that happen for you. Right on, baby. I have a CD burner. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> I flutin over here, Craig. I and you can get, get a like screen record on OBS. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> no, he's got a camcorder. He's gonna point it towards the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's gonna get my phone out exactly. <laughs> and you, can, you you can burn 4K. You can. It's a certain speed, but you can do it. It's possible. Uh, I'm uh, burned up for fifty dollars. I'm full doomer. Doomer on the digital revolution. Instead of buying DVDs and Blu-rays, we subscribe to streaming. Instead of buying CDs and vinyl, we subscribe to Spotify. If you think we won't accept, you'll own nothing and be happy. We already have. Well, yeah, except I own CDs still and vinyl. When you talk about we, yeah, (laughs) Yeah. I am, I am full on. I've gone nuts with the physical media. I, I did. I had, you know, back when I was broke, I had to sell a bunch of my shit and uh, I'm buying it all back now. And uh, I'm very happy with the collection. I love it. Plus it sounds better. Streaming sound sucks. It, it's shit. Mm. The, the, the one movie that it was really good was the killer. It was really fucking good for the killer, but most of the time it's shit. Yeah, go, go, go watch a movie on streaming, then put in your fucking 4k disc and see the difference. If you have a good system, it's, night and day night and day patrick ells for 50 dollars. imagine if you all had 100 million to produce your own film i wouldn't need 100 million i do like everybody else in hollywood i do a bunch of coke uh and then make a movie for two million uh you could all collaborate to write it us collaborate on a film it'll be you kidding you might, as well, you might as well get a bunch of cats yeah. <laughs> i think the story group i know is someone bad. who did that yeah. yes it'll uh, be better I, than whatever they're putting out so. would. uh or give the role to shad or eric that now that would work uh mm-hmm. a bunch of you and the geeks and gamers could have acting roles and all of you could promote it it would be big it would be bigly bigly <laughs> bigly bigly yeah, m- m- we're retarded, so uh, we're not going to do that. <laughs> but uh, we, we, we definitely would know to hire the right people to do it uh, and, and tell the, the weirdos that don't deserve it to go fuck off. I have, uh, I have goals someday perhaps to, you know, reach there, uh, you know, working on producing graphic novels, and uh, hopefully those will be successful. And then I'm going to explore possible animation uh, adaptations that I can, you know, do With in-house. AI. AI tools, baby. That's what's going to enable me to do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the means. It would be too expensive. But because technology is becoming so accessible, mm-hmm. actually, animation is something that I might might be within my means, and that's exciting. That's and but that's still Shab- several years off for me. Yeah, Shab, yeah. you've 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 converted me, and I'm actually yeah. working on an AI project at the moment, and it's oh. called Skynet. <laughs> really? <laughs> that sounds uh-huh. interesting. Can't wait to see I it. Don't more. I, yeah. That's such a nice name. It, it is. It is. I Can like I invest on the ground floor here? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, I want to invest. I just too. want people to talk to each other. So I'm just yeah. going to make it. Well, as we do with going. everything. Yeah, with access to the internet. Internet. I, I, that, that sounds like it's going to go off like a bomb. Sounds. Yeah. Crazy. Well, you know, if it gives it access to the internet, it's just going to become racist. Well, you know, it, it, I heard Skynet will bring tr- true equity uh, and equality <laughs> at the end. So. You know that there actually is a real Skynet company. Yes. Like they they yep. thought this was a real, they thought like after Terminator 2, they should name their company Skynet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. Uh, Britt 
Cormier, uh, Cormier, Cormier. 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 He's, French. he's French, and I just insulted like the, the French earlier. Uh, for one hundred dollars, <laughs> hell, Brit, you're way better than Brit Hume. It's the only other Brit I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's the real question. <laughs> Fucking Brit Hume comments. I didn't have that one. I didn't have that one listed on my FNT uh, bingo card. Think of, aside from like the Brits. Um, <laughs> hail my Brits. What's up? Uh, the deep question, the only question, using their logic, how do we ever get another character, Lieutenant Dan? He has legs. Then he does not have legs at the same in the same film. Do they have to recast him? Does the actor have to cut off their legs? I'd say the actor has to cut off their legs. Brett. Come on, place to place the Dan. You ain't got no legs. Uh, Battlestar for $100. God, I hope that annoyed my hungover brother-in-law next door. He's <laughs> probably still passed out. He, oh, dude, he's passed. JT's passed out, man. He's down, <laughs> he's down for the count, man. Uh, toys from the 80s were great. Cartoons didn't patronize. Still waiting for a good G.I. Joe movie. You and me, Jeremy. <laughs> Hell yeah. I want Honestly, to no, 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 no. I don't want, I don't want, just leave it the fuck alone, dude. After Snake Eyes, leave yes. every, just leave it alone. I don't, I don't want them doing anything with G.I. Joe. And they will, but I'm just saying, I have no hope for it. That Snake Eyes movie is the worst thing I've ever seen. That's pretty good. Give me, give me, give me a, good. We want a good R one, not another fucked up one. Give me an R rated film about a Crimson Guard. Oh That'd be cool. God. You, yeah, you yeah know, I, I, no, but you saying that makes me remember how excited I was for Rogue One when it was announced. Ooh, they're going to be all, it's going to be war driven. Ooh, this is good. No, like, I, I just, it's not going to be good. Whatever they do is not going to be good. And um, I think, like, you know, I think it starts out that way, Jeremy. And then it gets just it gets noted to death by all the fucking producers. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And then, of course, the message fucking ruins everything. Can we tone down Ooh. the toxic masculinity? Uh, yeah. An omnibus for G.I. Joe coming in December 2023. Oh, a Marvel omnibus. That'd be cool. Hmm. I have all the comics. I don't need an omnibus. Go buy all the comics. Comics are better. Yeah, I'm just like, big and thick and heavy and take up books shelf space. Yeah. That's what she said. I don't know what the I haven't I haven't seen the the most recent Transformers movie. I've heard mixed. I've heard some people tell me it's good. Some people tell me it's, it's not, not good. It's so, fucking shit. Yeah. And, Wait, which uh, one is that? That's not Bumblebee, right? Rise no. Of the, one? Rise Rise of the Beast. Fucking so. terrible. You still yeah. like it because there's and, so many diverse robots. <laughs> <laughs> hey, doesn't it have silverback representation in that film yeah. it's not it's, it's no I mean, comment no comment <laughs> um as how's that uh transformers comic by kirkman uh it's okay it's all right it's all right it's not mind-blowing but it's uh it's got a really good g1 vibe to it and uh i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a few more issues see where you know I'm not. I'm not uh, put off by it. So I'm not. It's, it's okay. Open, opening a Bumblebee is the best fucking Transformers movie. It just is. I liked Bumblebee. One hundred percent. But I like the CGI. I, I still. I still like the first Transformers movie too. I, I like, like it first. too. Oh, yeah, the first one's great. It's all the, right. the, the rest you, you of them are like terrible. Fine, but if you've seen the first ten minutes of Bumblebee, that blows that out the water. Dude, one of the greatest toys I own is the Robosun fucking. Optimus Prime. That is oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. coolest fucking toy they've exactly. ever made. It is. You got, got your the Grimlock app. on the way. The, gri the oh, you do. Oh, oh, yeah. so fucking rad. Uh, Kratos. I got the Bumblebee. I got the uh, Robeson Bumblebee as well. Oh, I haven't gotten that yet. Okay. Well, it doesn't tran The only thing about it, though, it doesn't transform. Oh, fuck that. I don't know. It's in robot no form only. No time for it. Uh, Kratos El Gratos for $50 says, I like it when you call me the big 50 big 50 i don't that beardo does it better than i do but uh put gary in it make him gay and late well I'm too late <laughs> already happened <laughs> i'm just not diverse yet still working on that i'm gonna be transracial can i be transracial yeah loki Get season two melanin. ninth on the top streaming shows from november 13th to 19th yeah well you know worked for rachel dolezar so i don't see why it wouldn't work for wait, you wait 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 yeah. Yeah, if she can do it, I can do it. Was that overall or originals? 
this is top streaming programs, November 13th to November 19th. Number one, The Killer. Number two, Matt Rife, Natural Selection. Number three, mm -hmm. Best Christmas Ever. Number four, The Crown. Number five, All the Light We Cannot See, season one. That's all Netflix, by the way. Top five of Netflix. So the, again, this is overall streaming, not yeah, yeah, originals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's top it streaming. Debuted, yeah. So this is its debut as well. N this nine. This episode, it's at nine. Ooh. Yeah, number so six, Lawman, Bass Reeves. I want to see that. Apparently it's been yeah, I want to see that. I want to see Bass Reeves too. The Great British Bake Off uh, Show, season 11, number seven. Number eight, Lessons in Chemistry, season one. Oh, she's meant to be appalling, by the way. Uh, number nine, Loki, season two. And uh, number 10, How to Become a Mob Boss, season one. Netflix is seven out of the 10. So wow. what? It, where is you? where are you finding that at? Uh, from Samba TV. Okay, so it's Samba. All right, so it's not yeah. actually like Minutes Watched or anything. Okay. Well, the Nielsen should have been out for Loki already, right? Well, not for the final, not for the last. Uh, the the okay. newest ones that'll be out for Nielsen is like week of October, like seventeenth or something okay. like that. So I think we got a little well longer to wait. It's yeah. like five weeks behind. <laughs> yeah, but Loki like did not do as well as season one. I don't think we're any of us is going out and limb by saying that. And uh, it, it, it it does it, sound like it had the same number of people watch the finale as it had watched the uh, mm. uh, first episode which is not i don't think that's something that's ever happened for any disney plus show <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. uh it's still i'm sure it's i'm sure it's still down from its uh i'm sure it's still down from its you know finale last or in season one but in terms of first episode to last episode it seemed to hold or at least brought people back for that finale oh dude Ugh. and 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 that will affect the next show because they they hung in there they hung in there and waited, and nothing fucking happened in that last episode. Oh, nothing. God. All right, here we go. Just like the comments there, nobody even said anything that just sort of represented Loki, I guess. So. There he is. <laughs> That's fucking great. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> great. Uh, Side scroll. What are you doing, Craig? <laughs> There's a reason. Read it. Side scrollers for one hundred dollars. <laughs> the only reason I'm super chatting is so Gary can read this extra loud so he can annoy his hungover relative. <laughs> Please read this again, except louder. Also, thanks for having me on. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, I'm getting yelled until six in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in his house too. That's the result was good. That's good. There you go. That's what I was hoping for. Oh, nice and loud. JT. J JT's great. He's awesome. Yeah. He built this house. He built it. Nice. On rock and roll. Bare hands. By himself. No, by himself with like, like he's a Fancy handy tools. dude. Oh. Yeah. It's probably some rock and roll. Yeah, thing, a hammer thingy. Need yeah. a hammer. Probably had a hammer. Yeah. 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 Maybe a nail gun. Maybe maybe a nail that gun. Scares me. Nail guns. Is he very Why? good at meowsonry? Meowsonry. Meowsonry. <laughs> no, he's like he can. He can do fucking anything. He's like he can build anything. He can work with fiberglass. He can build boats. He can fix motorcycles, cars, everything. He can can do he it eat all. his own head? No. Yeah, he can't do everything then. <laughs> But he hasn't tried. His head is huge, though, because the, the entire Wagner family has, like, size eight heads. Like, they're <laughs> fucking massive heads. Uh, Rhino Helix. Uh, two parts for $75. And this will be it. We're going to have to go after this. Uh, as Woke claims another storied IP, my condolences to the longtime Doctor Who fans. Oh. I haven't seen Doctor Who since Tom Baker. You're better off for it, probably, mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, if I wanted to watch the good stuff, where should I start and where should I stop? All hail FNT. Um, go from Tom Baker all the way up to Peter Capaldi, then stop. That's it. And and Peter Capaldi's pushing it. I know. Only, 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 only what happened in through 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 season Capaldi. 10 was I After. heard where you should stop of new. Yeah. I, well, as I agree with as I say, watch season eight. Up to eight. Up to eight. Oh, and Torchwood is really good so far. And then you can watch, like, I guess, Heaven Sent. Watch Torchwood Children of uh, Earth. Children of Earth is fucking amazing. 
it's, it's really some good. of the greatest television ever written. And the rest of the series is like, eh, it's all right. <laughs> and that, that actually has Peter Capaldi in it as a completely different character. Oh. It's a completely different character, yes. Uh, part two here is second bite at the apple. What's a good watch order if one wants to start Doctor Who now as a fan who that hasn't seen an episode since Tom Baker uh, was the doctor? When should I stop? If you already read this other super chat, just hail FNT. Hail to you. So, yeah, I would go back because you, you can now watch everything in order, pretty, especially from Tom Baker's era. Uh, you can go to BritBox uh, if you're, uh, and, and start watching it there. Uh, and yeah, just. I would go, I would just start at the beginning. That would be yeah, me and just really whip all the way through it. Uh, you'll be busy for years, uh, depending on how quickly you watch the stuff, but that's a lot of TV and it's really it's good. It's worth it though, honestly. It makes uh, all the mm. stuff we were watching, like especially Loki. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, but for me, David Tennant, man, I mean, that dude was fucking phenomenal. And it's uh, sad that they fucked everything up after that. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we got to run. Uh, I want to thank everyone. Uh, this square up will be Monday night when I get back home. I did the first part of one. It's on Nerdrotic Live. You can check it out right after the show if you have, if you missed it this morning. So uh, let's go around the horn again. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving and you still have the whole four day weekend here in the States. Uh, if you're Australian or British. Get your ass back to work. Stop fucking sitting around. Let us Americans enjoy some shit. Same with you Canadians. With your with your fucking Thanksgiving on the wrong day. I don't even understand that. Wrong month. Wrong. I think you know what? Next yeah. time if I go to Wisconsin, I'm just going to stay for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm going to join yeah. in until 6 a.m. and keep you awake. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what? You would have been there. You would have been there with, uh, 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 well, Melissa's cousin. Um, I can't say his name, but uh, he's... It's the one family member, guys, that watches us. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know that. And I'm like, I didn't think any family members watched us at all. Like, watch my stuff. It's probably better that way, honestly. Yeah. No, no. He's a big fan of Mahler and uh, everybody here and uh, watches all our stuff. You would, yeah, X ray girl would have been up with them till six in the morning drinking. She is a lush, mm -hmm. absolute lush. <laughs> See your meetups, man. Oh yeah, dude. It's wild. Be wild. Uh, what do you got coming up, Comics Division? No idea. No, I got something. Um, something coming out uh, Monday. Um, actually, I'm going to talk about the Miles Morales thing, which I, I think is pretty funny. Um, yeah, so that's basically uh, what I got planned. So I said, I was work out this week, but I didn't. I, I love that, that lady put the quote in. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's <laughs> funny. That quote was not in the article when it first went up. So and funny. then I tweeted and then she put my quote in. Well, that was the thing I thought was funny because I, I read it that morning and I was like, what are you talking about? It's like the quote was in there, but yeah, it makes sense. I, I want to go hit the archive and see, you know, basically so I could do a comparison. But a, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is basically some of the stuff that we talked about um, last FNT about the whole thing with um, how they've been trying to replace their flagship character. And this is just another example of that. And also just addressing the controversy around the whole thing with Miles Morales being Miles Morales. Well, yeah. Remember to bring out when this, I don't want to start in a tangent because this could actually get one going. Ask the question comics. Why do they need to replace Peter Parker? So well, badly? He, that's actually, so you're kind of the thesis of the, uh, the video. So yeah. that's the He's white. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> As is trying to go out with a with a bang. There yes. we go. No, uh, it's it's just fact. It's yeah. true. They, they can fucking call it whatever they want. He's the biggest fucking thing on the planet in terms of superhero. Peter mm -hmm. fucking Parker Spider Man, the biggest fucking thing. The only way that you would want to change him is exactly what we get when we get the fucktards with Doctor Who. They want to erase the white fucking legacy because it's now problematic for them mm. because they don't have the talent to make new characters. And then they think if they do make a good character, it should automatically be purchased because it's new and not necessarily good. Do the fucking work, you lazy bitches. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that, that's the ultimate issue with these characters is that they... They don't have the time or the patience to make them, you know, I wouldn't say make them popular because that's the thing. They can't make no, them popular. No. It's not their choice. Looking forward to it. Thanks, comics. Thank you. Hey, girl, what you got coming up? Uh, uh, tomorrow we have um, Party Animals with Az, myself, 
uh, Eric and Mr. Porkchop at 1 p.m. Eastern. And then the next day, Valheim at uh, 1 p.m. as well. Also, Saucy Saturdays is back with Disbrew and myself and Wicked Virtue at uh, 9 p.m. Does okay. Disbrew get saucy? He does. No, <laughs> no, we never it's planned this to be a show, but it was just really funny between the three of us getting drunk and just talk about nerd stuff. So, yeah, cool. Must oh, be and a forbidden short conversation from you. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For forbidden Frontiers this Sunday is not happening for those who do watch it. Unfortunately, I'm driving. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, there is one more super chat if you want to read it or shout you read it. it. Okay. Uh, Misanthropic Normie for ninety nine ninety nine says, Hail FNT, first timer, but found my way here after uh, oh, Disney oh, ruined shit. Willow. Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. Wrong Hold on. <laughs> after Disney ruined Willow. Yeah, I was the one person that loved Willow as a kid. Would love to see Paul Chato, Baggage Claim, Carl Benjamin and Lauren Chen on again. Thanks again. Happy Thanksgiving. They'll all be back again. Hey, well, I love all those yeah. people. Thanks, yeah. I love Class Classic Willow. Loved Classic Willow as a kid as well. One of my old yeah, great movie. Yeah. And they made the made name <laughs> Willow. <laughs> Quarter Black, what do you got coming up? Hey, uh, I didn't do Thanksgiving because I have a bunch of people in my family and they all work. So we have, we're doing it on Sunday. So we get to string out the Thanksgiving greatness throughout the entire weekend. Um, and let's see. Forbidden Frontier is off. So next week, Forbidden Frontier. And uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Normal World where we're doing sketches and having fun and talking to funny people. Hopefully, we can get more of you guys on pretty soon. Uh, that's pretty much it. I'm just kind of taking a break from social media, which is freaking glorious. Like if you have not done it and you're feeling like, ah, there's so much stupid stuff going on in the world. Just get off of Twitter. It kind of mm. all goes away. <laughs> it's really great. So that's kind of it. I'm enjoying it. But it's completely okay to roast Mark Hamill, even when you're in the middle of eating Thanksgiving. <laughs> that is always <laughs> permissible. It's always acceptable. Absolutely. Yes. Cheers. Uh, Shad, what do you got coming up? Well, I got a brand new YouTube channel, Gary. It's all about AI art. I'm sure heaps of people really interested. Oh, my God. I subbed five times. <laughs> but I actually had a really good debate with a professional comic book artist about who is dead set against AI. Um, and so really good back and forth and addressing a lot of, you know, uh, concerns and criticisms people have on that channel. You know, on Night's Watch, uh, Valencia sent me some of those, um, uh, like, theatre seats uh, just, you know, to put it in a video and give my thoughts on, and they're actually really good. Got some nice theatre seats. So you got some was, theater seats? Hey, theater seats? nobody fucking calls me with that shit. I know. I, I, theater they, seats? Just, they just reached out. It's like, hey, we like yeah, some, like, some, this some really good, and un ironically, really good seats. And like so, recliners? And stuff recliners, and yeah. Wow. Oh, that's all I get. What the hell? That's awesome. Hey, uh, what was the last video you put on Shadowversity? Why don't you tell the folks about that? A lot of oh, that was a heck of fun. So we actually test out, um, uh, you know, the Hobbit Black Arrow scene. Uh, where Bard kills um, Smorg, and we actually put that to the test, and that was a hell of a lot of fun. Fuck so, yeah, hell yeah! Me. Thanks, Shad. Bye -bye. Chrissy, what do you got Ooh. coming besides a kid? Um, yes, I'm. <clears throat> he's the size of a mango right now. Oh, that's good. Aww. Come on, God, girl noises, girl noises. I'm a, I'm a, I'm ten thousand six hundred away from hundred k on YouTube. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, tonight at ten p.m., I'm doing a movie watch along of the Nightmare Before Christmas. So uh, nice. log on to my YouTube. Uh, listen to my fun commentary for that. We got, I'm going back on Newsmax. Hooray. They're going to have me back. Really? Uh, yeah. Ooh. I'm recording uh, something on Sunday. I don't know if it's going to come out Sunday or later on in the week. So that's very exciting. Uh, and then Simcast Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern with Lauren De Laguna, Ariadna Jacob, uh, Venti, Anna, Nina, Melanie Mack will be on that one. And wet spot, of course, uh, Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern on Compound Media, and I'll be in Tampa headlining the Side Splitters Comedy Club December 3rd. 
with Keanu Thompson, and I'll be at the mic drop in San Diego January 5th and 6th uh, with Lila Hart. So get tickets on my website, chrissymayer.com. Cheers. Before I forget, after you subscribe to Chrissy, Film Threat is dangerously close to 100,000 subscribers. They're at 97,000. We still have some people here. If you're not subscribed to Chris Gore's Film Threat, please do so. Uh, and get Chris Gore and Ng the Merciless to 100,000 subscribers. Uh, He's it's X-ray a great, Girl's dad. It's X-ray Girl's dad, and it's yeah. a really good channel. It's a really good channel. Uh, it's our pal Chris Gore. We love him a lot. So please support him if you haven't subbed already. Yeah. Uh, what do you got coming up, RK Outpost? Um, nothing. Just making more videos. I guess Thanksgiving's over, so we can officially uh, start putting up Christmas stuff. So. <laughs> That's about all I got. Yep. Dude, our shit's already up. <laughs> uh, well, I wait till after Thanksgiving. So now I'm good to put my stuff up. Respect the turkey. Exactly. I respect the turkey. I respect the turkey and put up Christmas decorations. I freaking love Christmas. <laughs> Christmas is and, awesome. I, and I question all of your commitment. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way, Gary. That's all and I so is Jesus. Okay. So, <laughs> That's right. Uh, as I, I'm gonna um, probably stream again after this. Uh, mm. Probably Moria because I've one? just I've just done a thing. I've just mm-hmm. done a thing, and I want to do the thing. So I'm gonna do the thing. I'm gonna eat first. I'm gonna get a drink, and then I'm gonna do some strum, and then I'm probably gonna do some gym, and then I'm gonna be like, ha, no fucking F and T for a month. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gonna, what are you gonna, gonna do with all your us. time? You're going to miss us. He's I'm gonna going to build a Lego. And jerk off a lot. And jerk <laughs> off a lot. He does that anyways. <laughs> he jerks I'm off gonna, a lot. It's no difference. <laughs> I'm going to oh, pick up my horticulture hobby. He's going to get a lot of ladies. <laughs> uh, as, as I, I am going to miss you on this show. You know that. Yeah. So, uh, no, I don't, I don't know that at all. Shut the fuck As up. We'll to, we're going to take turns, each of us, who gets to sit on the floor every week. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, it takes two people to replace As. Okay, so we're going to have uh, wow. this tool. I'll be Dang, Gary. <laughs> He's right there. What are you talking about this, Gary? Oh, fuck you. I'm going like that. <laughs> 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 we'll be back in January, ladies and gentlemen. Disparu and uh, Mahler will be sitting in for him. Uh, and no, I'll, I'll miss him. And uh, he doesn't know I'm going to take a month off of Real BBC too. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, that was last minute. But no, I'm not taking a month off of Real BBC. You kidding? Um, so uh, thanks, as uh, Jeremy. Man, what do you got coming up? You going doing some uh, Cobra Cast tonight? Yes. Cobra okay. Cast uh, for the first time ever on the internet. I will talk about Donald Trump on Cobra what? Cast. So if I you want to see it for the commercial. first time, I'm going to talk about Donald Trump. So, but yeah, Cobra Cast tonight over on my D Day Cobra channel, and then gaming after that. So um, more more OG Fortnite. I can't stop playing OG Fortnite again. Something that goes back to the basics and gets everybody playing it again. People seem it, very happy. Peak peak numbers ever for Fortnite when it goes back to the basics of what made the game popular in the beginning. Amazing, amazing that companies uh, are thinking of this idea that fans have been talking about forever. The so, population yeah, of Canada awesome. was playing that game at once. 45 That's million fucking, nuts. fucking people in one day. <laughs> That's that nuts, just, dude. That, that, is, that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, but yeah, so I'll see you guys on Cobra Cast. Shout out to Friday Night Tights. Awesome. And uh, congratulations to Gary on 900,000 911 i think right yeah 911,000 yeah. subscribers the road to 1 million baby here we go that's crazy you guys are crazy you're all crazy it's it's been uh, a great week around here so thanks for the record fnt thanks for the record real bbc thanks for the record nooner and uh you know and uh, hell of a lot of people watching we had over 16,000 watching the, damn near the whole time tonight so thank you thank you hail to the fellowship Go watch Cobracast. Uh, then as game after he, he wanks and goes to the gym and <laughs> all that stuff. Uh, 
stuttering Craig from Side Scrollers Podcast. What do you have coming up, sir? And thanks for coming on, man. Man, what a what a pleasure. What a joy. I'm so so honored to be on, and I appreciate you guys. Uh, yeah, so we do a, da- a live daily gaming entertainment podcast. Uh, so if you want to come join, we uh, the entire podcast focus of the podcast is common sense if you're not batshit crazy you probably have a place for a place at home uh every day so you can join us over on uh you know the at side scrollers podcast we're live at 11 a.m central time uh, monday through friday this week uh monday tuesday wednesday i'm going to be live from the geeks and gamers house so you may head out there and hang out with jeremy and all those boys and girls over there so yep yep uh come come join me would love to love to get to know you i appreciate everybody allowing me to kind of invade your space over here and hang out with you guys and hopefully i contribute just a little bit to the show absolutely You're not invading anybody's space we need to flood the internet our our institutions with common sense we need to infiltrate just like the sjw's do so if you uh mm-hmm. if you got the gift of gab and you want to just hang out and talk with your friends fucking get on the live stream and do it you know, uh, there's got to be the more of us, uh, the the better, the more strength we have. So we appreciate yeah. you coming on, Craig. And uh, con- congrats on side. Oh, yeah, get, uh, congrats on getting Razor Fist on. I fucking love Razor Fist, dude. Yeah, Razor is great. He's, he's on on Mondays. And he's on on Mondays. And uh, yeah, we're closing down to 60,000 subscribers. We'd love for you guys to come and join us over there. So hell yeah. Hell, hell yeah. Well, uh, I'm staying an extra day in Wisconsin so I can watch this fucking Doctor Who special. I'm going to live react to it to the members when it's on. Then I'm going to make a video and get the fuck uh, out of here. I can't <laughs> handle that. I like it. <laughs> I might be able to do one. I don't know if I can. You know what? Here's what was my expectations. I thought RTD was going to come back with David Tennant and they were going to be like inoffensive and fine. And then I was going to kind of dip after that. Um, I don't think I'm going to make it through the three. It's it's this looks just those two clips they showed are horrifically bad and proof he can't go home again. So anybody holds out hope that George can come back and fix Star Wars, it will be the same no. fucking thing. Mm-hmm. It'd be terrible. It'd be fucking terrible. So uh, that's what I'll be doing. Thanks to the Mod Rodics. Thanks to everyone who left a super chat and donation. Again, second part of the super chat score up will be Monday night when I get home. And uh, thanks everybody for a great show. Really appreciate it, and we will see you next time. Ciao, Bella. Well, yeah. Bye.
Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come. Dame, dame.